Okay guys, and welcome to my Thorn Explosion Charge Release Build Guide. Um, don't let the length of this video um, intimidate you. Uh, it's very in-depth, but you can skip over as much of it as you need. I have set up chapters for every single piece that you can pop to, whatever you need to. Um, it is a labor of love with this build. I've been playing variants of this build uh, since day one. And uh, this season I decided to make the change to Barrier. And I really, really firmly believe that it is the best version of this build. Um, there is a lot to go over. And I've put a couple sections. If you're new to Barrier, there's a whole section on explaining what you should be looking for in terms of Barrier. And obviously every piece of gear everything is going to be in here. Um, I'm going to go over the pros and cons in the next section, but I just wanted to do a little intro here. Um, I also wanted to, completely unrelated to anything, say hi to Rook3493, uh, who <laughs> popped up in my chat just as I was starting this video and I didn't get a chance to, to respond. Um, so thanks for watching my stuff, and anybody else who happens to message me in-game, you have no idea how much I appreciate when people message me in-game and say, like, I watch your stuff, thanks for the, you know, the videos. I, I really, really appreciate all the viewers. I hope you guys uh, get the most you can out of this. If there's any videos you want me to do, if there's a topic that I haven't done, uh, or a video that I haven't updated in a long time, please let me know. Anyways, this is my end game season three build. Um, I will be making changes, obviously, to it next season and updating this video. Uh, but this is in season three, uh, Thorn Explosion Build Guide Barrier. Let's get into this damn thing. Okay, before we dive into it, I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons uh, of the build. The things that I've run into that uh, gave me trouble um, and whatnot. Uh, so pros, it is really tanky. Um, I, I don't have many things that are able to kill me. Um, the high-end void rifts obviously are going to be trouble for anyone. Um, but uh, I have, I have I, uh, what, 28. I haven't been able to beat 28 in a void rift. Uh, and I'm making it to 3 or 4 in the current uh, solo descent rate. Um... With that said, I still have lots of work to do to make this thing better, um, and there's a lot of room to improve, which is great. Um, it's very fast because we're using shield charge. It moves very, very quickly. Um, and for the most part, it's a very well-rounded build. Um, cons. It doesn't have exceptionally high damage. Um, there are a lot of things I can do to improve the damage that will make substantial increases to the DPS. Uh, but I'm doing about 5.5 billion DPS with the current version of it, um, which is not mind-blowingly high. I'm sure if you're new to the game, that sounds like a lot. Um, but comparing myself to a lot of the really high-end players, I think I'm 20th on the damage chart right now, so I'm not particularly strong. Um, so it does have trouble getting into those much much higher dps things um another con that's not really a con is it does require quite a few things to really start to work well in terms of defenses um because barrier uh absolute requires a few things and i talk about them i believe in the next section that is the barrier section um about how you need overflowing energy and you need a good pantheon and you need high barrier to make it work and other things um it's it, it does have some setup time and it does have uh some knowledge that you need to really make it work well um i've included as much of that knowledge in this video so hopefully you'll be able to uh extrapolate from that and end up with a solid build as always, when it comes to uh, pros and cons, you may have other issues um, that I don't that I don't think about here. Um, Element reflect is the only modifier it can't directly deal with. Um, I do talk about in the one section that you can easily move these two points in specialization three to down here to deal with element reflect maps. Um, if you happen to get like a legendary map that's got element reflect and you really want to run it. 
Um, overall, it's a very, very well-rounded build. It's strong, it maps well, it does good single target. Um, even with the mapping version, I do have a separate version that I use for single target. Um, it doesn't require any uh, particular uniques to make it work well, although it does do better with a few of the uniques that you can get. Overall, I'm very, very happy with how the build has turned out, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get into this damn thing. Okay, so I'm not sure where I'm going to place this section in the video, um, but I want to talk about the barrier overall and explain why um, I've made the, the conversion to barrier and the advantages of it and some of the important things to know. Uh, so one... Um, int has a massive effect on your overall barrier. You should try to stack as much int as possible. Getting barrier every single place you can, um, so it should be on all of your gear. Um, you should have gear barrier uh, and gear barrier percent on every piece that you could possibly get it on. Um, it's very, very important. Trying to get the legendary rolls barrier is obviously very important. Um, getting barrier amplification where you can um, and all your zodiac stones should have barrier obviously all of those things the things that are not important are things like barrier regen time uh, and and any of the other things um, barrier on hit like a flat number barrier on hit is going to make just about no da difference no difference at all in your barrier use because you're going to be getting most of your barrier regen, not from barrier regen, but from two sources. And one is Pantheon. You get 20% of your max barrier per second while it is active. Uh, I'm working on getting this cooldown and duration closer to each other so I can keep up time on this. Because 20% of your overall barrier per second, when you're talking about 30,000 barrier... Um, is a lot of barrier regen per second. So even if enemies are doing 2,000 damage a second, you're probably not even moving your barrier. Uh, the other important thing is overflowing energy. You're gonna have this on both of your skills and it's going to regen um, your barrier per second. So you're gonna, between the two of them, you're gonna be getting 14%. But it's only active when your barrier is less than your mana percent. So you'll see that a lot of times in this build, I'm going to be taking things like um, resource cost dampening in a lot of places because we want our barrier to stay, or our mana, sorry, to stay as high as possible at all times. And that's because um, when the barrier drops below, we're getting that 14% regen. Um, we want to keep it as high as possible at all times. It's very, very important percentage one, which is why gaining things like mana um, from the int is also very important. Now, I talk about how, how much of a kick in the teeth this is, um, but, it, but it does help the overall because percentage-based barrier stuff, or mana stuff, um, is going to help us keep our barrier up. Um, also, things like using the barrier potions can really make a difference. Um, you can use both of them at the same time. I've had people be confused by potions uh, when it when you talk about the enhanced potions. Uh, they'll see that I have both the damage and the dam high damage on, and they're like, oh, those stack? Yes, all of the potions stack. I don't know why people have it in their head that they don't, but you can use the low barrier and the high barrier, the low offense, or the low attack and the high attack. All of them stack. Um, and you should be using the barrier things if you can. Um, there is one other source I get of barrier uh, gain in this build, and that's on my gloves. I get barrier absorb on spell hit. Now, I don't actually know if this is making that much of a difference. Um, this cast speed doesn't help me at all, so at the moment I'm just sticking with this. Um, I do want to do some further testing with it, but it's hard to test gaining barrier without being in combat. And then if I'm in combat, I need I need the other barrier regen effects to be off for me to know if it works. 
I would be inclined to say that this Barrier Absorb on Spell Hit isn't particularly effective. There are very few sources of Barrier Absorb on Hit, um, and I don't think they're worth it because, again, between the Pantheon regen and the overflowing energy uh, times two, you're, you're gaining so much barrier that you don't need it. So you'll see pieces that have max barrier regen or barrier regen time, um, and I don't feel like any of those are even remotely worth it. Um, that's, I think, all I wanted to talk about, about just barrier in general, um, because people who haven't used barrier in this game are very confused by it. I know I was when I started out, um, and I didn't feel like barrier was very good, but now I, I mean, obviously, very, very, very strongly that barrier is very good. Um, so I wanted to put this in. Anyways, guys, move on to the next section. Okay, let's talk room board. Now, I use two different setups. If you noticed in the play, the gameplay at the beginning, um, when I fight the Serpens, uh, I, I'm using a single target setup as opposed to uh, the mapping setup. Uh, you can use the mapping setup for single target. It does quite well. You can use the single target for mapping. It does quite well. But there, the mapping setup is much cleaner for mapping. It's going to do a lot better unless you're really, really, really pushing difficulty and you're running into champions that are giving you a lot of trouble uh, with single target, uh, I've switched to using the single target setup mapping currently uh, because I'm pushing, uh, I'm doing plus 27 maps and it's a little bit uh, rough dealing with the champions, but uh, it doesn't slow you down more than maybe a minute a map. Uh, but if you're really worried about going fast, obviously use the mapping setup. I'm going to talk about both setups really quick uh, and I'm going to talk about the overall. Every section is going to be broken into its own little thing. Obviously, you can skip to each section if you uh, don't want to hear about that section, I guess. So, the attack setup, the main attack setup. Again, I've got two variations we're going to talk about. Obviously, from the title of the video, you know that this is a Thorn Explosion Charge Release setup. Now, uh, early on in the setup, you can use Charge Release, and I recommend you use charge release as the trigger or as the, as the main skill and uh thorn explosion as the trigger um and i say this because uh it's it unless you've got stuff established already the thorn explosion is going to be a very small area of effect and it doesn't have a very far range as well as if you are using charge release as the main you get a a pretty substantial i don't know where it is now a pretty substantial cast speed increase. I don't, know, I don't know why I can't find it. Anyways, it gets a cast speed boost when it's the uh, the, tr the one casting. So I recommend using charge release. Now, if you're already established and you're just whipping this build together from, from other stuff, you can start right with Thorn Explosion. If you're going to do the mapping version, you're going to want the Origin Awakening. Okay, uh, It's going to give you extra projectiles, but you need a ton of area of effect to make it work well. Um, otherwise, the individual hits aren't very strong. You need a ton of AoE to make it overlap so that it does extra damage, so it's going to be good for mapping. It, uh, you need about 280 explosion range right here uh, to make it work well. It doesn't have to be exactly 280. It's not like a hard number. The more you get, the better it's going to overlap. Um, the better it's going to be at single target, even though it's your mapping. Um, so we're going to be using area of effect with origin to get that extra area amplification. Um, we're going to be converting it to lightning because we're a lightning build and silly to do it otherwise. Overflowing energy is an absolute must if you're going to be using the barrier version of this. It is non-negotiable. You absolutely must be using this. Um, quick cast obviously is pretty standard. Um, you're going to be using Mana Storm linked between the two. You can use other things linked between the two, but this one is going to give you uh, the most amp from what I've seen without screwing up 
the uh, the area of effect. Uh, you'll see in the other setup we use concentrated area damage link between the two because it's better overall. You're gonna you're not gonna have to worry about mana quite as much. Not that you're gonna have to worry about mana, uh, but it it won't have the downside of this. But it does make the area smaller. So if you're using the mapping setup, you want as much area as you can. Um, and your charge release is going to be Verity. Now, there's much to be said for using the other one, I can't remember what it's called, that increases the area, so the projectiles kind of go all over the place, um, but, and get the amp from it. Personally, I like having the bind rate. Um, I won't need that later, because I'm going to be trying to use... A thing in the lacrima you'll see so that i'm freezing enemies uh which means i won't need the bind rate and i'm going to be going for the amp uh the downside obviously of the amp one is it's going to go all over the place but that's sort of an upside in some cases too uh so i, I again i can't remember the other uh awakening uh i'm gonna be using concentrated area damage with charge release um with source for more more amp less area because it's not going to matter on charge release they're so small and they don't shotgun or overlap uh strike is always going to be very very strong as a link thing because you can ignore the uh the cast speed dampening and still get the boost and again overflowing energy is non-negotiable on both links um if you are starting out in the build uh, this is going to be probably one of the harder things to get two copies of because it is a rare synthesis only. Um, you can get it in pity boxes, obviously, but it's going to be hard to get these two <clears throat> as is. Now, the other setup I use, and I'm saying for the single target, I switch out the uh, origin or source, okay? And I switch out spot weakness for... Uh, or sorry, not... I switch out area of effect for spot weakness. Um, spot weakness, uh, well, hold on, and I switch. Uh, spot weakness, you are gonna do a lot of damage amp when you're up close, as well as getting a uh, nice dodge boost as well. That's gonna make a bigger difference when I make some changes to the build that I'm working on. Um, but it's a nice little dodge boost up close. Obviously, you do have to be up close, but I find that I pretty much just stand in front of every single enemy anyway. Um, I'm a very close-range fighter to begin with, so being up close isn't a big deal, and the the dodge boost is pretty nice. We switch Mana Storm so that it's exclusively linked to charge release, and we put concentrated area damage in here so that we can get uh, the sort of the most damage out of it. Outside of that, we don't change anything else in the damage stuff. Uh, the big thing to note is that the Source Awakening has a huge, huge uh, range that it can roll. And you really, really gotta hit high on both of these for it to be worth it. Um, so if you get a really bad roll, uh, it might not be worth. And if you're going to build uh, if you're if you don't have a lot of resources or a lot of time to grind, um, I wouldn't recommend taking the single target at, or worrying about it at all. Um, I would just stick with the mapping version. Again, it does perfectly fine through everything. You're just gonna have a little more trouble on single targets. That's it for this one. Let's move on to the next section. Hey, future Mike here. I forgot to talk about um, using Killing Machine. Now, occasionally, if you happen to look at my build in-game, you will see that I have replaced um, Element Damage Amplification with Killing Machine. Now, Killing Machine does less damage overall, um, but it does give you a substantial uh, movement speed increase when Killing Machine is active. Uh, so I typically will connect it to my triggered skill, in this case, Charge Release, um, so that I can get a movement speed buff uh, when I'm doing very low tier stuff that I'm trying to get through as fast as I can. So if I'm doing constellations of time, or if I'm just trying to plow through dailies and doing low tier maps so that I can get through my dailies very quickly, um, I will be using that. I don't recommend using it unless you are killing things immediately, if they are dying in one hit and you want to move on. 
Um, that's convenient. I just got a six. As I'm doing. Uh, the skill itself, again, it doesn't do no damage. It's got a pretty substantial uh, damage amplification, but it's only up while Killing Machine is active. And Killing Machine is only active if you're killing things very, very quickly. Uh, so if you see my build in game and you see that I am currently using this, um, keep in mind that I only use that in certain situations I typically don't use. Okay, next, let's talk about the toggle skills. Currently, we are using Seal of Critical Chance um, because my critical chance, because I am doing some, some testing and some moving some stuff around and my lacrima is not at all where I want, um, my critical rate is not as high as I would like. Um, I believe we are only at about 642 somewhere. I'm in the wrong thing. 642 spell crit rate. Ideally, you want it to be about 730 for 100% crit at 155. Um, but this currently brings me to... I don't know why I just changed that. I did the change. Brings me to 92%. Not great. Um, I would like to obviously hit higher than that. Um, but currently, that's what it's at. So we're using seal at crit rate. If you uh, get your crit rate to 730 uh, without using the, or, or if you can get it, sorry, not to 700. If you can get it without the seal to, you know, the 600 mark or something. So I'm 537 without. Um, if I could get to 650 without the seal, I would use a different seal. I would use seal of elemental my god i haven't used it so long i don't even remember what it's called let's go look we're gonna learn together guys where are you seal of condensed elements okay i would use that um it is very very strong but again it's not strong enough to overcome that lack of crit uh so i'm using the seal of crit uh you're going to be using Cold armor, again, this is a more or less non-negotiable if you're going to be running barrier because it is such a huge amount of barrier that you get. Um, I, I personally think it's it's absolutely required for a strong barrier build. The defensive seal we are using currently is seal of elemental domain, but I'd like to point out that I'm only using that because I just came from solo descent raid where I'm fighting a fire enemy. Uh... Akagneel. So, if you were use, fighting somebody else, it, previously it was Magroth, I was using Seal of Physical Domain. If you don't have access to either of these, uh, Seal of Dodge is probably your best uh, bet, because you're not going to need armor. Uh, you'll see why when I get to the next section. Um, but you, you can use any of the defensive seals here. Again, if you're low on armor, feel free to use it, but keep in mind... Uh, that your armor doesn't need to be particularly high in a lot of cases. Um, there's, so my armor is only about 19,000 unbuffed, uh, but when I use my move skill, my armor goes to 84,000, which is almost exactly cap, and uh, that's going to be up permanently, so we don't have to worry about that. So the seal of defense with the armor, I personally don't recommend. I would rather go with something like dodge um, or whatnot. Uh, the other toggle we are using, uh, currently stuck on uh, the other side of the board, is uh, Unite Crowd. It's only there for the movement speed, and if you don't know, I'm going to super quick explain. It needs to be level 30 and awakened with the Verity Awakening, and you will get a toggle. You could turn it on to either increased armor or increased movement speed. Um, when I'm fighting very strong things that I'm worried about, that little tiny bit of armor I'm missing, I activate the armor one, but normally I just keep it on the move speed. Okay, that's all the toggles. Let's get into the enhancement skill. Nope. I just totally realized I forgot to mention um, all of the toggles are connected to a dampened resource cost. I'm using a second copy of it over here. Uh, and the cold armor and seal of 
critical chance are connected to improved technique to get a little more out of them. Uh, I, I personally feel like those are the best two. Uh, you could, again, if you really felt like your dampening was low, you could try connecting the seal instead of the cold armor, but I feel like you're going to get more out of the cold armor. I haven't done a lot of testing with that, uh, but that's something to keep in mind. Okay, attack and defense enhancements and the single trigger. So for uh, our attack enhance, we're using a release element. It's just a really strong one. Um, you can use, oh my gosh, what is it called? The critical one. Uh, but frankly, once you get your critical rate and everything situated, it's not that good. Early on, if you have a really low crit rate, and you're having trouble getting crit, it can be a really, really strong uh, thing. But later on, you're going to want release element. Uh, I use the Verity Awakening just for the enhanced effect. You're going to link it to Time Acceleration. I'm currently using Intellectual. Uh, you can use, oh my gosh, what is it called? The green one that I never remember the name of. It's something, or I don't even know what it looks like now. <laughs> it's, it's a, I am so bad at this sometimes. Uh, oh my God. It looks like this. It looks like that, but it's not that. There it is. Versatility. Um, you can use versatility if you are early on and you don't have intellectual. Um, it gives you the attack or the cast speed enhance, uh, but I don't feel like it's worth it because I'm I don't need the cast speed and I don't need the element pen. Uh, intellectual gives me a little bit of a boost in terms of damage that uh, versatility won't. But versatility be, can be very good early on if you don't have access to intellectual or you're just looking for something else. It is important to note that you can only put one of these on at a time. Uh, there are there are like attack enhance skill modifiers and you can only put one of them on. You can't link these two. If you try to link them, the, it won't work. We are also linked to increase duration for obvious reasons and enhance effect for obvious reasons. Uh, we have Seal of Striking, Awakened with Source, so it is a rapid seal, connected to increased duration and time acceleration. If you can find a way to squeeze it with an enhance effect, that would be great, um, but it isn't going to make a huge difference. Uh, the only other... Uh, or the Defense Enhance, sorry. The Defense Enhance uh, is Pantheon. Again, this is more or less non-negotiable in this build because it is Barrier. Uh, it's going to regenerate a ton of barrier per second when it is active. Uh, you're going to do everything you can to get the cooldown down as far as you possibly can. Um, having the duration up is fine, um, but it, if you have to choose between doing something on it that is going to decrease the cooldown or increase the duration, because the duration is short and the cooldown is long, any, if you, if you did 5% of either, you're going to get more by increase, or decreasing the duration than increasing the duration. Uh, or de decreasing the cooldown rather than increasing the duration. Uh, I have it connected to time acceleration, uh, so it's cooldown, increased duration, obviously for duration, and enhance effect for the effect. I also have it connected to overflowing strength right now. I don't necessarily care about the effect of it, uh, because it does armor, which we don't really need, and resist, which we don't really need. What I do have it on here for is this enhanced skill cooldown recovery speed. Again, uh, because trying to get the cooldown down as far as you can is good. There is another one that does block that you could use in its place. Too long here. Ed? Never gonna remember. Focus Defense. There it is. Okay, You can use Focus Defense. Um, it'll give you a little bit more block expertise and stuff, which is great because we're a shield user. Um, the only difference is it'll give Defense Enhanced Skill Rune effect as its legendary instead of the cooldown. Um, and I don't feel like this little bit of block is worth the time that you would rather have that up, uh, personally. Because the I'd rather have it up more than have it affect more 
because it's hard to get the the cooldown and the uh, duration near each other. The last thing is pretty standard buff activation upon crowd control linked with shout of justice to break you of any, out of any stuns. Um, and I have it with hush shout just so its cooldown is a little bit better, uh, so that it can go off more often. Okay, movement skill setup. Uh, my movement skill setup is basically the same across every character I've run so far. Uh, you're going to get a movement skill connected with use count and disarm. Okay, If you have a space, you're going to connect it with one more thing. In this case, I'm using readiness. But I'll be totally honest with you, I don't feel that readiness is actually that important or that good. Um, it's just a nice little extra bit of regen both hit point and barrier uh, but i don't really feel like it's a huge thing the do thing it does do that i like is the skill rune cooldown recovery speed um it's not a huge amount but it's something uh every time so i'm using uh shield charge with verity uh as my move skill because it is just it, it's it's the fastest move skill with the only downside being that it can't move through enemies uh, which can be problematic. If uh, if you want a, an, a different option, I like Roll is a really, really good choice as well. Um, it's fairly quick. It's not as fast as Shield Charge. Um, but I like Shield Charge uh, because it, it's a fast... It, it's instant response and it moves exactly where I want and there's no messing around. Roll does have the advantage of giving you a dodge bonus, which is kind of nice. Um, but for the most part, I just stick with this. I always connect it to buff activation upon using movement skill. This can be hard to get, so if you don't have it, obviously you're not going to use it. You are just an absolute nightmare today. You know that? You're super cute, but you're such a pain. Rawr, you too, sir. Uh, I'm going to link it to uh, my shield charge to Shout of Provocation. This is where we're getting all of our armor from. Again, we only have about 19,000 armor. But we go to like 80,000 or whatever when uh, we use this. It's really, really good um, until they give us a better option. I think this is pretty much going to be the standard. Uh, you have it linked to hush, sh Hushed Shout and Lingering Shout. Okay, Those are the two that are absolutely required. Um, with those two and everything together, the cooldown is faster than the duration. Um, it's not currently. I got it. I messed up. Uh, but you can keep permanent uptime on this, giving you max armor all the time. Um, I also have it linked currently to improved technique, just to give it some more levels. Um, th this isn't required at all. That is just like the other one up here. Uh, if you have a different uh, spot, you can put quite a few other things in there. Uh, if you don't have this, or if you just don't have the space. Um, but that's what I would go with uh, for movement. Okay, final thing on the rune board is the rune stones. As I always say with these right now, rune stones do not make a massive difference unless you've got really good ones. And getting good ones is very hard. And more importantly, it's hard to get them and have them be in a spot you need. Uh, generally, what you should be aiming for is something that is going to modify your two main attack skills. And then generally like your attack or your defense enhanced skill. Um, currently I've got area of effect on my thorn explosion because I need the area of effect uh, when I'm mapping. I've got critical rate on the other one because I'm not quite at critical rate cap. And I was using chain lightning before so this was pulling double duty but I'm not using it now. And uh, rune growth, so it's plus three rune levels on my release element, which gives it a little more juice. Again, these are generally not that important. Just try to find something that hits, again, your two main skills, uh, area of effect, critical rate, damage amp, those kinds of things, um, or damage for that skill in particular. Good luck getting them. They really, really need to work. I'm gonna get some of this for a stat book break. I'm stuck on your tail, too.
Move it. Okay, guys, let's talk gear. So we're going to start, obviously, with weapon. And the upside of the weapon is you don't have to worry about authorities. None of the modifiers, in my opinion, are going to be as strong as what you can get in a well-rolled weapon. Uh, so your priority here is going to be getting an 11 crit rate base. Uh, it's the Fortune Negation Wand. I forget what the Tier 34 currently is. Obviously, it's not going to matter much longer because we might get new tiers with the new content. But for now, all you really need to worry about is getting an 11 crit base. Um, critical rate on your weapon is incredibly important to your overall crit rate. Um, so it's going to be very important to get an 11 base. The uh, 260 mana implicit is a slap in the face because it doesn't do squat. And I really hope when they make a new tier that this this isn't an insult. Uh, there is no other options. It's mana. You don't get a choice. You get mana. Uh, your implicit, uh, your authority implicit actually has quite a few good choices here. Um, I went with the gear item quality. It goes up to six, and that's what you should probably go for. Um, because this percent is going to directly affect your overall weapon damage. Um, there are some other good options. The Alyssa Authority gives you area of effect, which can be really handy if you're just starting out in the build and having trouble getting the area of effect to make the mapping setup work. Um, Akuben has critical rate, which it's not a lot of critical rate, so it's not particularly effective, uh, but if you are in a situation where your critical rate is really low, uh, you can go for it. Um, again, personally, I'd go at gear item quality. Um, Vesper has spell critical rate. If you've ever heard me talk about critical rates before, uh, or any, any stat in the game, the more narrow the focus, the more you're going to get out of it. Um, so you could go with the Akuben critical rate, but Vesper's spell critical rate is going to give you like 7% more or something like that. I forget what the number is, but it's something like that. Uh, and the the last one here, the one I've gone with, the gear item quality is from Sephdar. Uh, it's the only one that's got gear item quality, but I really feel like it is worth it. Beerus is just meowing her goddamn head off over here. It's hilarious. Uh, not distracting at all, of course. Um, so your suffixes on your weapon, in this case anyway, are going to be the more important of the sets. Um, so I'm going to talk about them first. Um, spell damage, critical damage, and gear critical rate. And I cannot stress enough how important this gear critical rate is. This number, okay, is going to be the biggest factor on what your end critical rate is going to be. Um, so getting a, a tier 13 gear critical rate is very, very important. I wish I had known that when I uh, made this weapon, um, because I, I had just started converting to crit. I really didn't know exactly what I wanted. Uh, so I went for this, and I took a 12, and I, I, I'm kicking myself every time uh, because I should have gone for a 13, the most important. You'd think something like the critical damage would be the most important, or the spell damage. And the spell damage does affect, again, directly the weapon damage. This this spell damage isn't an overall thing. This is specifically for the weapon. Um, and the critical damage is good, but if you got a much lower one, you might only lose 20% crit damage, which isn't much. Um, so it's, it's well worth your time to make sure that the gear critical rate is a tier 13 and rolled all the way to the max which is 130 percent uh your sub your prefixes is you can go pretty lax here but it's still going to be really hard to get everything you want on prefixes um weapons are generally pretty hard to roll because you want to get all six modifiers uh the flat lightning damage is the one that in my opinion you should probably focus on the most trying to get a high roll uh, because it's the lowest chance it, it, it I forget what it is to end up with it but it's a very low chance to get 
lightning damage in the first place so getting a high roll on it is going to be important um, because if you've ever heard any of my videos I talk about the the base of the pyramid thing the more flat lightning damage the bigger the base of pyramid the bigger your pyramid can be for damage um, spell damage should be your next most important thing again because this is going to affect directly the spell damage of the weapon itself and if you get a high roll which again I didn't know at the time when I made this if you get a very high roll here the crafted lightning modifier you can get is going to be the same as the equal tier of a flat lightning roll so if I had got spell damage 13 and then got rolled to a 13 it would be as strong as this one so it takes some of the pressure off of trying to get this as high as possible obviously you'd like to get them both as high as possible but you know you, you do what you can weapon speed is the next most important thing um in this case i find that i don't desperately need uh a ton of speed uh you can probably get away with a tier eight um i went i have i got a tier nine so i was like cool that's great um, but I'm over the cast speed cap currently by a, actually a significant margin because I'm making changes. Uh, so this isn't super important to get a high roll, but your lightning damage and your spell damage on the prefixes really, really are. When it comes to your, uh, what is it, your legendary modifiers, uh, gear critical rate is going to be like... A huge difference because it's going to give you two flat critical rate which is then going to get modified by everything else it's it's very very strong and you should really try to get it even if it means re-rolling uh or regressing sorry the weapon a couple of times once you've got a really good weapon it's not worth trying to regress for just anything but if you're going to end game it's really worth getting um and that'll be a suffix uh legendary if you can get the prefix legendary of flat lightning damage again it's going to be a huge add to lightning uh that's it for weapon let's move on to shield okay shield um i went with an armor barrier base here um i'm not sure i necessarily need to go as heavy into armor as i do but this is i feel like this is a really good spot to get a lot of armor i haven't actually checked what amount you can get in barrier uh, if you go for a pure barrier version, um, it might be something I look into next season. But at this point, uh, you know, with three weeks left until season four, I didn't feel like it's a super important thing to try and redo this stuff at this point. Um, the damage base is obviously a good choice. Um, the other ones that are like mana on hit and stuff, I don't feel like they're very worthwhile. It is a small damage amount. Um, even at max, it goes to like 40 but it's damage. You can't go wrong with damage. Um, the authority modifier, or authority implicit, I always use that word wrong. Um, I went with barrier because barrier is good. Uh, you could also go, uh, so I did, this barrier comes from uh, Seftar or Alyssa, but you could go with Miraceti or Leo for gear item quality, and it will affect this value but it won't affect it as much as like you'll get more barrier by going flat barrier than you will going percent uh or the the gear item quality um if you were doing a straight barrier one i think it would probably be better to go with the gear item quality uh because you'll get up to six gear item quality and I, I i did the math on it when i was putting the shield together but i i, I don't know what it is off the top of my head uh, for the modifiers, the uh, the prefixes are, I at the time, I thought they were going to be a much bigger deal. Um, I'm not sure that's the case now. I think if I redid this shield, or when I redo this shield in Season 4, um, I'll be doing this differently. But element damage is going to be one of the best suffixes, obviously, uh, because you can get element damage. Uh... I went with just a resist here because there honestly isn't any particularly valuable third modifier for suffixes so this is a good spot to just fill in a resist um and then getting totem hit point which you can get from any shield that's got barrier uh will, will craft into skill rune effect and skill rune effect is really really strong i've talked about it a lot 
Um, if I was to redo this shield, I would definitely get a 13 on the totem hit point, uh, because this skill rune effect is just so strong, um, because it affects all your skills. It affects your offensive, defensive, toggles, everything. Um, as for prefixes, I absolutely 100% 100% if you're going to bother getting a shield, you are going to get dampened damage taken decrease. Um, this d decreases. Uh, also, it's important to note that there's an uh, error when you're crafting it. It will say element damage taken decrease, but th it's actually damage taken decrease, and it decreases everything. So that's physical, chaos, and element. Um, it's super important to get as high as you possibly can. Again, if I had... Uh, redone this i would have made sure this roll was a 13 because it's hard to get dampening uh the other two should be fairly obvious uh is going to be gear armor barrier percent and gear armor barrier flat and again you're going to want these as high as you possibly can it's going to give you a ton of armor and a ton of barrier uh the legendaries uh aren't particularly amazing um but you can get gear barrier uh percent as a prefix that is pretty good or immune to burn, uh, in my opinion, would be the next best choice. Um, anytime you can get immune to a status effect, it's going to be really strong. Um, and the suffix has just straight damage amp. Uh, either of those would be really good. I'm going to be aiming for those when I redo this stuff next season. But that's it. Uh, also, it's important to note that quality on your shield, um, much like your quality on your weapon, get it as high as you possibly can. I cheaped out on this one because I was, again, I was just learning um, the barrier setup and switching to crit, and it was a, there was a lot going on, um, so I cheaped out here, but this number is going to make a huge difference in the amount of armor and barrier you're going to get from this, and again, if you were to go with a pure barrier version, I'm sure this number would be even more important, um, so try to get that as high as you can. Okay, on to helmet. Okay, helmets. Uh, we're going with a pure barrier base here. Um, initially, I was using one that's got element penetration. Um, uh, so yes, I was initially using element penetration. And uh, early on, if you don't have solid element pen, it can be a really good choice. You're going to lose a ton of barrier overall. Um, but if your element pen is really low, this can be a great source of a, a small amount of element, or well, not a small amount, a decent amount of element pen at the cost of some survivability. Um, when it comes to this piece, uh, the, the best choice for your authority is barrier. Uh, you get it from Akuben. Now you could get a uh, gear item, uh, percent but it's going to get it's just going to change the barrier anyway and it's going to give you less barrier than what this is so i would go with the akuban barrier um it is a dual authority piece uh so you've got akuban as the uh skill enhance rune cooldown recovery speed and then capri for enhanced skill rune effect it's also important to note that capri also does critical damage um I didn't have the resources when I made this piece to get what I wanted on here, but ideally, your last three uh, would include the crit damage. The other option that is available here that I didn't go with is uh, on barrier pieces, you can get totem and then re-roll it into skill rune effect. Now, I don't know if I'm going to uh, end up doing that because... Overpower effect is really strong, and I feel like going with overpower effect, and I'm going to get to that in a sec, to more of it in a second. But um, if you got the the totem and went with the skill thing, you do have a a much larger chance to hit overpower on one of these two, um, and it could be worth it if you could hit if you have the the crafting resources uh, to do it. It would definitely be worth trying to get the skill and overpower. Um, but I didn't want to waste a ton of resources on this helmet because I was making this helmet like a week ago for a video. Um, so we're at right at the end of the season. I didn't want to go super nuts on this thing and waste a ton of resources because I know 
with the gem slot upgrades, I'm going to be putting on a new helmet in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I went with this. Um, let's talk about the piece in general. Prefixes, uh, very, very important, is the enhanced skill rune cooldown recovery speed. This is a lot of enhanced skill rune cooldown. Uh, the other two, again, very important, are going to be barrier and barrier percent. It's going to give you a lot of barrier. Um, this is going to make a pretty big difference overall. Um, it's basically half of what my chest piece has, and that's a lot of barrier. Um, so it's important to try and get barrier high on both of those. And then for your suffixes, enhanced skill rune cool, uh, enhanced skill rune effect. Um, also very important. It even at a high thing, it's not a huge amount percent wise, but it will make a big difference. Um, so you should try to get that as high as possible. And then, like I said, um, critical damage. And if you can't, or if you aren't going to go the totem route, um, just get some hit rate. There's not really much else good on here. Um, and I find that this build had a, had a low hit rate overall. So because you're not going to really stack a ton of dexterity. Um, so you're going to have a, a problem getting your hit rate up. At least I do, because I'm trying to get more points into int. Uh, so you're going to have trouble with that. I would get that. Um, now, when I talk about the craft for this, it's really important here uh, to choose which route you're going to go. If you're going to go the totem route, okay, um, you're still going to want both of these things to be as high as possible. 12 or 13 for both of these. And hopefully one of them hits overpower. If you don't go the totem route, okay... Whatever one you have of these that is the lower, unless they're both tier 13, whatever the lower one is, that's the one you should craft, and then you should try to high craft uh, so that you hit overpower on the other, because if it hits overpower with a high craft, it's going to give it the highest tier, which in this case will be a 13. Um, but if you high craft on this, you have to hope it hits a 13, and then... This can only hit a 12, so you're going to get more out of it. It's very small difference, but it's it, in the long run, it's going to save you materials um, if you're doing it that way. With the Legendary, um, it's pretty much the exact same as the Shield in that you'd want the Gear Barrier Percent and, for the Prefix, and then the Suffix is an Immunity. Now, if you happen to get, like, because it's Burn, ble it's the Dot effects. It's Burn, Bleed, or Venom, okay? So if you happen to get uh, burn on the shield, again, which I feel like is the most important one to get stop, um, then you'd try to get bleed or venom immunity on. That's it for helmet. Let's move on to necklace. Okay, gear necklace. Now, initially I had assumed that the crit damage necklace was going to be the best choice. Uh, I later on decided that stats is going to probably... Um, be the better choice overall because this isn't a ton of critical damage and there's so many other sources to get crit damage but there's not a lot of sources to get stats and because we're going to get so much benefit from gaining a lot of int uh, I would really really go with the stats personally uh, your authority implicit I went with critical rate because my critical rate is really low um, but you uh, if you get to a point where your critical rate is capped or over capped or close enough to uh, cap that you could get away with this 24% not making a big difference. If you, uh, so this was from Leo for crit rate, um, but Boreal, Aquila, Seftar, and Capri, which you're going to be using Capri anyway, um, can give you flat, or not flat lightning, percent lightning damage. Now you can also get um, critical damage and damage as well as elemental damage but you'll hear me talk about this a lot the more narrow a damage type is the more you're going to get out of it um so if you go with the lightning i forget what the percent what the number is it's like 60 percent or something but if you go with elemental it's 50 percent and then if you go with damage it's like 40 percent if you go with critical it's even lower <clears throat> so i would either go with the leo critical rate or one of the aforementioned lightning percent. Uh, when it comes to modifiers on here, uh, there's there's a lot going on. The uh, you can really really cram this necklace full of stuff, but it's going to be 
multiple authority. Uh, so like dual authority, prefix, suffix. Um, and it's going to be hard to get everything you want with good values. But if you really want to push this necklace, uh, you can. So it, uh, two pre-built ones that you want in your prefixes. Um, lightning damage. I, I talked about it in the previous sections. Get tier 13 lightning damage. It is very worth it. Um, element damage, same thing. Get as much as you can. Now, the, the next slot, again, is if you're going to go dual authority, has a couple of halfway decent ones. I don't feel like they are worth the extra cost and extra uh, struggle to get them. Um, but if you really want to go nuts on this thing, uh, you can go with uh, the Miraceti effect, okay? for uh, knowledge effect on hit. Uh, knowledge gives you uh, spell damage on, on spell hit, which is decent. It'll give you like 50% or something if you don't have it through another source. Um, we do get it from our attack enhance because we have intellectual clicked on it, um, but that's only while this is up and it's got a pretty big gap in the downtime. It's almost seven seconds of downtime. So you would be getting something from that. Uh, or you could go with the Akuben Overcharge effect, uh, which is going to give you cast speed and uh, lightning damage. Uh, again, it's prob it's only 50% lightning damage. Um, it's probably not worth it. Uh, but again, if you really want to go nuts with this thing, um, the getting a dual authority with Akuben here uh, would be pretty solid. Uh, suffixes, there's no no contest here. The Capri um, damage amp is going to be big. If you get a good roll on it, I didn't hear I made this necklace a long time ago and I had no resources. Um, you can get, I, I think it's like 10% damage amp from this, which is really good. Um, and I absolutely recommend getting this. Uh, and then skill rune cooldown recovery speed. Um, because it on its own is pretty good, getting skill rune cooldown, so that's your, your attack enhance, uh, your defense enhance, your, your movement skill, um, and those things. But more importantly, it can roll uh, craft into overpower effect, which is really strong, and you'll see it on pretty much every piece of gear that I've got. Um, because it gives you flat damage, which I always talk about flat damage, bigger base pyramid, um, and element penetration... Um, flat element penetration, which makes your other element penetration percent worth more, um, which means you need less of it, which means you have more modifiers to work with, which is really good. Um, the third modifier here is really, really, really um, up in the air. Uh, you can get so many different things on this third modifier. I got Chaos Res. I needed it at the time. I went with it. If I was to redo this, I would try to get stat plus um, because it can give you 19 uh, stat plus at 13. Uh, tier 13, you can get 19. So that's 57 um, stats. And again, we're talking about trying to get as much int as we can here. Uh, if you went with the flat number, okay, so if you went with a dex, an int, or a strength here, um, you'll only get 50. So it's worth trying to get the stat if you're going to do that. Um, but again, you can move them around as necessary. So getting a stat here is a good choice. And then again, all of the resists are available here. So go for it if if that's what you need. Uh, for legendaries, it's again, much like the others, barrier is going to be probably your best choice here um, as a prefix. But you can get element damage as well, which is a pretty high roll. Uh, for suffix, uh, there's stat percent plus which is really big um for making your stats go up as much as possible uh i can't recommend it enough if you can get it um but then there's also crit rate or crit damage which again um are easier to get more of so i wouldn't worry about getting it here if you uh if you need it get it but you should try to get the suffix uh the stat percent plus Puh. That was a mouthful. On to the shoulders. Okay, popping back to uh, necklace for a second here. I forgot to talk about um, Capri's heart. Now, it's incredibly hard to get. 
you can only get it from a couple of sources. Um, one is the uh, 6,000 point Stanella Pirate box, and the other one is from Champions Legendary box, the Shining whatever box. Um, very hard to get, um, but it is a strong enough necklace that it is probably in competition with the um, the well-crafted necklace. Um, I still think the well-crafted necklace uh, is going to be worth it, but this Capri's heart is very, very strong. Um, it will give you stats, it will give you critical damage, hit rate, a huge chunk of chaos resist, and additional fire damage on every hit equal to... 35% uh, at max of your total end damage. It takes all your damage and then it gives 35% more. Really, really strong. Um, it's definitely worth uh, contention for a wearable necklace. Now, I'm going to talk about in the Lacrima section um, where this would be a better option. Uh, but if you do happen to have this, it is well worth wearing unless you have a well-crafted necklace. I just wanted to pop back and talk about that real quick. Okay. Uh, go go to whatever section is next. I don't know what I said in the last section because it was days ago. Okay, on to shoulders. Now, I've currently been using armor barrier uh, resource cost dampening. Um, and I've been doing that because I thought I really, really needed it. But as I've progressed into the build i realized that because of um, the just ridiculous amount of mana i've got and some other reasons that i'll talk about later in the video um i don't feel this is really important and because of that it does open up a whole bunch of other opportunities um for base shoulders uh there's one that does projectile damage there's one that does area damage um but they're such a small value they're only like 30 percent um, and because of that, I think when I get to the new season, um, I'll be going with a pure barrier shoulders because I don't really need this armor. Um, I'm pretty sure I showed earlier in the stats, uh, in the, the skills section that, uh, I don't need this armor to be armor capped, uh, and I will get much, much, much more barrier, uh, out of a pure barrier shoulder. So I think it's much, a uh, better choice, um. Early on in this build, you will definitely want this resource cost dampening, though. Uh, so I would stick with that until you are confident that you don't need the dampening. Whis is just meowing his face off over here. Beerus was doing it earlier. Now it's Whis. Uh, the Authority Implicit. Now, there's some really good choices here. I'm currently using Chaos Resist because uh, I, I really need the Chaos Resist. I was way low... Um, so you can use Aquila to get Chaos Resist. It only goes to 15. It's not a huge amount. Uh, there's much, much better places to get it. Like, I got a crappy roll here. But if I had got a Tier 13 here, I wouldn't need this Chaos Resist. I would still be at overcap. Um, now, you can go with Seftar for Flat Barrier. Um, if you're using the Armor Barrier version, going with Barrier is going to be your best defensive one. But if you go with the pure barrier version of the shoulders, you should go with Capri for gear uh, item quality because that quality on the barrier is going to end up more... You'll, you'll end up with more barrier overall. Now, with that said, if you are super comfortable with the defensive setup you have on the build, um, the best one by far is Enhance Skill Rune Cooldown Recovery Speed from Alyssa. Um, because it's the enhance runes. It's your defense and offense cooldown speed. Uh, and in this case, keeping your, uh, your Pantheon up as much as possible will make a massive, massive difference to your survivability. Uh, so getting that cooldown down, uh, closer to the duration would be a really big help. And as soon as I get my Chaos Res fixed elsewhere... Uh, I fully, or on the shoulders, uh, again, this will be next season, but uh, if I get the Chaos Resist fix, I will definitely be going with, with that. Um, so, your prefixes and suffixes, uh, crap, I forgot to go check what this is. Doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to move on. 
Uh, there is an authority. I don't remember which one it is, and I don't know them from their little symbol. But uh, on shoulders, you should get Chaos Resist when Fire, Cold, Lightning, and Poison Resist are all 100 or more. On its own, it's going to give you a massive amount of Chaos Resist. And if you get to a point where you've got your Chaos Resist situated... You can craft this into Barrier Amp, and if it's Tier 13, you can get a lot of Barrier Amp. I think it goes up to 14, almost 14%, um, which is a huge amount of Barrier Amp and really, really strong. Uh, the other two prefixes, again, as with everything in your Barrier build, um, it should be Gear Barrier, Gear Armor, like almost unquestionably. These will make massive differences, especially if you're using the Pure Barrier version of this, which I will be. Um, and you'll want 13s on both of those. The suffixes on this are honestly not... There's nothing really mind-bogglingly good. Um, lightning damage comes flat... Uh, not Sorry, lightning damage comes built into the thing, so you can try to get lightning damage. And then after that, it's really... You're just going to take one of the resistances and hit rate, or if your hit rate is situated, um, you're just going to take two resistances. Getting some chaos resist here is a good choice. Again, because getting Chaos Resist anywhere is kind of complicated, so I, I feel like this is a really good choice. Um, now, you can get... There are two choices if you're going to try to do a dual authority here. Um, Capri has straight damage percent, and Miraceti has straight... Or has element damage percent. Now, I want to point this out because... This and those are mutually exclusive. You can't put the Capri damage and get lightning damage. They cancel each other out. I'm trying to save people from doing this because I did it and it drove me crazy. Um, and if you had to choose one of the three, this one will give you the most lightning damage as opposed to damage, which will give you... Uh, like this at 13 goes up to like 75 or something and damage goes to like 50. And then element damage goes to like 65 or something. So this is going to be your best choice. Definitely go with that. Um, with the legendaries, the prefix, as with, again, pretty much every piece, barrier percent is going to be your best choice. And element penetration is going to be your second best. Uh, I got a really good roll on this. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to be very sad when I have to redo these next season. Uh, I think that's it for shoulders. Let's move on to belt. Okay, on to belts. When it comes to belt for this build, uh, the Peddler's Potion Belt is head and shoulders above any crafted belt you can make. Um, it's got a, an option that you can't get. Actually, it's got two, really, that you can't get else uh, elsewhere on belt. Um, so it's, it's ridiculous. It's so much better. Now, the problem with it is that the only two sources you can get it from are the rib jaw 6,000 uh, boxes, and it's only a ch one in three chance of you getting it. Um, it is where I got mine, uh, but I just got it, and we're how far into we're, we're all at the end of the season, so it's not particularly easy to get. Uh, the other source is from Champions, uh, the legendary boxes. Uh, so good luck. Now, I mean, you can get it from the uh, is it the rubies? The perch, I'm not sure if it's the shop, uh, the rubies or the diamonds, but you can get it from there as well. Or, obviously, on the auction house. Um, but this belt is well worth the effort to get. Uh, it's got a really good base of stats, which we are trying to stack. Uh, Percentage-based hit points, percentage-based hit point amplification, which, as a barrier build, we don't care too much about, but it is nice. Um... 20% move speed increase, which is a big deal because it's very hard to get move speed anywhere except on boots. So getting 20% from a belt is a big difference. And I can confirm for my own purposes, I, it is a noticeable difference uh, now that I'm using it. Mana Potion cooldown recovery speed goes up to 50 is really, really good. Um, I've got my Mana Potion cooldown to like 6 seconds. Um, which is really good because it is a very heavy mana cost build and because of this modifier so damage increase upon uh, for two seconds upon using a mana pot uh, so I have set my mana pot activation to 98% so as soon as I spend mana um, a mana pot goes off 
and then I gain a damage boost for two seconds, and then I got four seconds where I don't have a damage boost. If I can find other places to get my potion cooldown down more, I'm going to be using it. Um, I do have it in the mastery as well, uh, which I will talk about when I get to the mastery section. Uh, mana potion effect, which is obviously very nice. Getting 100% extra mana from a mana pot is a lot of mana uh, and can make a big difference. And the minus seven resource cost is huge uh, because this affects your skills and your toggles and everything else. Now, if you can't get this belt, you can craft almost exactly the same belt um, with good crafting. So my previous belt has plus 15 stats, that's the same. It's got hit points, which is the same, this is just more. The only difference is that the crafted modifier I got was element damage, which this doesn't have, but this damage increase uh, for two seconds upon using a mana pot uh, really makes a big difference. It's more than this. Uh, it's dual authority with Vesper and Aquila. So that the Vesper prefix uh, for minus four resource cost, and then the Aquila prefix, uh, movement, skill, rune, max use count, uh, can be crafted into minus three resource cost, giving you the minus seven. Uh, then you have the Mana Potion cooldown, and uh, you can also get the Mana Potion effect. I didn't get it on this version. And then you get, you know, just a resist or something else. Uh, but... This belt, because of the move speed and this damage, is definitely going to be better. Um, and crafting this belt can be a real hassle because it is um, a dual authority, but it's both prefixes. And getting a dual prefix can be a bit of a pain um, if you've never really crafted it. Um, but in its place, definitely try to get the Vesper minus four resource cost. Um, if you don't know how to go about getting one, if you don't have the resources, uh, the best way to do it is just go to the uh, gear shop and go down to the belt, the mysterious belt, and just buy them until you get a Vesper belt, get the minus four resource cost, and just get kind of whatever else you can on it. Um, it'll be a very good thing to tide you over. It's what I used for a long time until I learned how to do dual authorities and stuff. And that is it for belt. Let's move on to the chest piece. Okay, chest piece. Now, if you're trying to make a barrier build, your chest piece is going to make uh, the biggest impact on your overall barrier. And I can't stress enough how much it's going to be really important to get high rolls uh, on this piece. So obviously we're going to be going with a barrier, a flat barrier uh, piece. Now there is a second barrier option that gives you like barrier enhance on cooldown or whatever, um, and I wouldn't go for it. Uh, it makes very little difference, like a, a, an unnoticeable difference to the how the build plays, but the maximum barrier, so this one goes to 282 and that one goes to like 260. Uh, that 20 extra barrier when amplified by everything is going to make a much bigger difference uh, than the little tiny bit of whatever the other thing is. Uh, absolutely, unequivocally, the best option for uh, your authority implicit is going to be dampened damage taken. That's physical, uh, elemental, and chaos. That's important because getting chaos dampening is very hard. Um, you get it from Sephdar. There are other options that are kind of okay. Um, there's some barrier ones and gear percentage and stuff, and those will make differences in your barrier and stuff. But this is one of the few good sources of dampening uh, for chaos, so I absolutely recommend this. Uh, you're doing a single authority, uh, which is going to be Cathsor for the plus damage skill rune level, and then you're going to craft overpower effect from that. The other two prefixes are gonna be the barriers, it's, uh, I, when I made this, I didn't realize how much of an impact the gear barrier percent was going to make versus this. If you have to sacrifice anywhere, getting the lower gear barrier flat uh, is going to make less of an impact overall. Obviously, you should try to get both 13s, but if you can't, uh, then make sure that the gear barrier percent is the higher one. Uh, this is... 
also probably the best place to gain resistances overall because you can get so much resist um from these rolls if you get tier 13 you won't need to get uh that resist anywhere else you will be covered um you should try to get as much chaos here um i again because i was crafting this very recently i kind of cheaped out on this when i do my new version next season i'm gonna make sure i do a better job of this um the legendaries gear barrier absolutely if you can get it is going to be so worth it it's going to make a massive difference to the overall um and that's a prefix the suffix you want is more spell damage uh or spell skill rune level it's going to be hard to get both of them um or even one of them uh so if you get one you know th take 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 the win and uh and call it a day but those would be the two you want okay kids on to ring hold on a second i forgot something now if you want to get really nuts with this chess piece uh what you can do is do a dual authority okay of uh Cathsor, and i believe it is speaker we're gonna go look right now because i for this reason yes there it is okay so if you can get all three of those st the uh prefixes okay, that you want so those it's those are non-negotiable you got to get those three if you can get uh this and then dual authority it to speaker and use a serpent's essence and get the the dampen damage taken from Spica, it's a 15% damage dampening across the board. It's huge, but the chances that you're going to land <laughs> that on a Serpens are, it's so low. Uh, I haven't bothered to try it. Also because uh, I don't play hardcore mode, I don't have access to Serpens Essences, and I don't use the Auction House. Um, but in a perfect world, you would have four, uh, four prefixes, uh, so spell damage, barrier, barrier, and then dampening, and then two, uh, resistances. I didn't bother to put it in the first one, and I went back and did it after now, because it's, it's so impossibly low for you to hit, uh, because this is already a pretty low chance. It's already 4%, um, and... You'd be trying to hit it with a uh, a a serpent's essence, and if it misses, then you have to scrap the whole project and start again. <laughs> like you, it's not gonna it's not gonna go well. Uh, so I mean, obviously, go for it if you want to get nuts, but it's it's really brutal to even try. Okay, rings. Now, rings are uh, for this build one of the most powerful pieces of gear, and uh, the problem with that is you have so many viable options and getting all of it together uh, would be very, very difficult. So you're going to have to make sacrifices, likely. Uh, so we're going to be doing spell crit rings. It's uh, pretty much non-negotiable. We really need the spell critical rate. Uh, if you can manage to get enough spell critical rate and other sources, going with the stats rings would be a great help uh because again getting int gives us damage amp and tons of barrier and stuff so it's really helpful uh so mo the more stack we or the more int we can stack the better uh the light flat lightning damage uh authority implicit i didn't bother to check what it is um but that's the one you should go for unequivocally no questions it's the best one do it now you have a whole bunch of options here, and you're going to want to get some of them, okay? A lot of them are mutually exclusive, and so you can get area damage, which is going to help. You can get element damage, which is going to help, or you can get projectile damage, which is going to help. They are mutually exclusive, so get one of those three. Um, projectile damage will do slightly less damage 
overall with the mapping version of this build, but will make no ver no difference on the single target version of it. Uh, because the second projectile attack is taken away when we use the... I don't remember which one, and I want to say the wrong one. Whatever the, <laughs> whatever the thorn explosion is that causes extra projectiles. Um, so you're going to want to get one of those three, okay? And then it, in a perfect world, okay, you are going to get Totem Duration, okay, which is built into, or which is not built into the ring. It's an authority. Um, I didn't bother to check which one it is. <laughs> You'd have to check. Um, so Totem Duration, and then roll it into Skill Rune Effect, which is really powerful. And then you would want to do a dual authority prefix, okay? And get one of the damage amplification when stats are X. Uh, they, all of them do 4% with the exception of, oh my God, Hamal or Akuben, which do five. It's probably not worth the extra effort uh, to get that, but... Just pick one of the damage dampening ones. Um, again, I don't know what authority these are. Uh, or not damage dampening, damage amplification. At 13, it's quite a bit of uh, damage amp, uh, so definitely go for it. Um, but totem duration, uh, giving you skill rune effect, is also very strong. If you can dual authority and get both of them as a prefix, wonderful. If you can get both of those and the area damage, element damage, or projectile damage, even better. Then you would have to do a third authority, uh, which is Cathsor, to get overpower effect, okay? Uh, which is, again, very, very strong. Absolutely no reason to not get this, which is why both of my rings, you will notice, I don't go for the dual authority on the top. I just get the overpower effect and then one of the things. In a perfect world, do triple authority on both of them, and get the overpower effect. The problem here is that the spell critical rate and critical damage are both prefixes. So you would need, to, for a perfect ring, you would need to hit very high rolls on all six modifiers on a triple authority ring, which would just be a nutty level of crafting. Um, I couldn't even process how much that would take in materials. Uh, if you want to get nuts, go for it, but probably just go for one of the dual authority ones. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you which is going to be better if the totem duration skill rune effect uh, or the amp. It's probably skill rune effect. Um, a high crafted uh, or a well crafted high rolled one would probably end up being more damage overall. Uh, not even just damage, better character overall because it's going to affect. All of your stuff including your defensive things uh you'll notice on my other ring on the bottom i took critical rate instead of spell critical rate now i've talked about these uh the more narrow a thing is the the more it's going to make a difference to the build uh so spell critical rate at max will go to 72 okay and critical rate will only go to 65 so that's seven extra percent if you go with the spell critical rate instead of critical rate. So why did I go with critical rate here? Well, because I got a tier 13 roll and I was happy with it and I don't have a lot of resources. So I said, screw it and just went with it. Um, obviously, if you get the critical rate and it's a good roll, just take it. Um, but, you know, you really want to get uh, the, the critical rate as high as you can. Um, because eventually I'd like to get enough crit rate that I can switch out, seal a critical chance for seal condensed elements, and it'll make a big difference. Um, but I currently can't do that, and I'm working towards it, but it's hard to get. Uh, your prefix, uh, legendary, you're going to want barrier. Your suffix, you're going to want spell critical rate on both of them. Um, I got pretty good. I got barrier on both. I'm happy with that for now. Uh... There is something to be said about tr taking the three hoops ring here as well. Um, it's not going to be as as well received as a well-crafted ring. It's not even close. But if you happen to get three hoops, it's got a ton of stats. 
which is going to make a big difference. It's got critical damage, it's got cast speed, it's got overpower effect. If you happen to get one of these um, from one of the boxes, somebody said it earlier and I don't remember, uh, it's the 3800 point, oh, it's both of the boxes. The 3800 point uh, boxes from either of the uh, pirates or from the champion, uh, champion orange boxes or the champion legendary boxes, um, you can get the three hoops. It's a solid ring. Obviously, it's not going to be anywhere near as strong in the end game as a really, really well crafted ring. Uh, but it is a very solid contender, and I wanted to point that out. Okay, guys. Okay, we got two pieces left. Let's move on. Okay, second last piece. We're almost done, guys. Uh, the gloves position in terms of defensive points uh, is is pretty worthless um gloves really are gonna be just offensive um so there's there's a lot to be said for going uh with just the element penetration now if you've already capped element pen i'm over the soft cap uh on element pen and i can actually drop some and soon as i get more overpower uh, I will be dropping the penetration already implicit, but at some point I would like to drop uh, just this as well. I don't know what the other options are that would be worth it, uh, so it's not a huge priority, but I know as I gain more overpower effect, this will be coming off, um, probably when I finish my other ring next season. Uh, but for now, there's, there's a couple of good options for uh gloves and the ones that you should choose again don't think of it on a defensive purpose because 310 barrier with a, a high barrier roll um and even if i got another flat barrier thing it might hit like 400 which is not gonna make a massive difference to your overall if you compare it to something like your chest piece or uh your helmet my shoulders will also be really, really high once I change out this co resource cost dampening. Uh, so barrier on gloves isn't a big deal. Uh, so you can go with a couple of different options here. Uh, there is a resource cost dampening that is armor barrier. There is a cast speed uh, that is armor barrier that I was previously using um, because I needed the cast speed and now I don't. Uh, so that's a good option. Uh, I'm using the Lightning Pen Authority Implicit, which again is not some. It'll be the first thing to go when I start dropping uh, penetration. And it there's two good options. The Akuben Authority Implicit does um, attack aura effect. Uh, I'm not sure how much it gives, so it might not be particularly strong. Um, and depending what attack and uh, attack attack aura you're using um it might not make a huge difference uh, i i would like to get it sooner rather than later so i can test it um or not test it so i can see what the values are but uh for now i'm using lightning pen because it, it keeps me over the cap that i've got uh also you can get a the miraceti just flat or not flat miraceti lightning percent damage uh, which is very solid, and I think depending on what aura you're using, so I'm using the crit aura, and I don't think giving it a f effect is going to make much of a difference, but if it was something like uh, Steel of Condensed Elements, I think it would be a bigger thing to go with the aura one rather than the lightning pen, but there's that as an option. Um, now, when it comes to prefixes... The most important one is the, what is it, Akuben, uh, getting the lightning damage. Again, I made these gloves quite a while back, um, and I didn't want to spend a lot of resources. I will do a much better job with these uh, when I get my stuff next season. But you'll want a tier 13 lightning damage. Again, flat lightning is hard to get, and it's hard to get in quantity. And the difference between a tier 10 and a tier 13 roll is huge. Uh, so this goes from 13 to 115, and if we look at one that's a 13, it goes from 67 to 249. 
it is a massive difference for those three levels. It is absolutely worth wasting the extra resources to get this to 13. Um, the other two modifiers, um, you could go with barrier on both, uh, which is fine. But again, because the barrier amount on your gloves is not going to be huge, uh, I went with cast speed because I wanted to test if barrier absorb on spell hit craft will make a difference, and I honestly can't tell you yet if it does. Um, so, it's nice to have the option of taking this out and just using the cast speed, or rolling another uh, mod uh, crafting a different modifier instead, and just keeping the cast speed as is. Um, so it's nice to get cast speed here, but again, the only modifier that really, really matters in the prefixes is getting the Akuben uh, lightning damage. And then you're going to dual authority with Aquila um, to get cast speed amplification. Um, it's a pretty huge source of cast speed amp, and uh, with a good roll, you, you can definitely get over the cast speed, um, the 5.0, quite easily. The other two are pretty standard across this build. Uh, you're going to want critical a spell critical rate and critical damage. Now, if it came to me rolling these again for next season, it'll be a different pair of clubs but when I get the stats on them. Uh, spell critical rate in this build currently is going to be more important than critical damage, and I wish I had put uh, more effort into getting this as a 13 rather than worrying about this uh, because I rolled these first and vespered them and then I just took whatever I could get on the top um, as for the legendaries you can get gear barrier here uh, much like on every other piece that runs barrier but it's not going to make much of a difference so honestly getting immune to shock is more important I feel it's really helpful against the uh, solo descent raids because a lot of them have shock effect and they're just gonna it's just gonna get you're gonna take that much more damage so being straight immune to shock is really helpful there's not really many other good prefixes um the suffix really only has two that are even worth and it's crit rate and crit damage uh the rest of them are pretty much garbage <sighs> okay one more guys we got boots and then we're done gear and and i can go to bed or something Let's move on. Okay, last piece, the boots. Um, boots, much like gloves, you're not really gonna get much in the way of armor or barrier from them, uh, especially because there's so many better offensive things in it uh, that I really feel like trying to get barrier, uh, a pure barrier piece of uh, set of boots is not gonna be worth it, in my opinion. You could obviously try it. I don't know what the implicits are like, but this 15% movement skill rune cooldown recovery speed is really nice. So I went with it. Um, I went armor barrier here. Um, I would go dodge barrier here, I believe, if I was going to make a, a new set because I don't need the armor and getting a little bit more dodge is going to help. Uh, the... Again, the implicit, you're going to take the movement skill. I don't know what the other ones are, but this one, in my opinion, is just going to be the best. Your authority implicits, um, I went with stats. There are a whole bunch of them. that I'm not going to list them all. Um, there's a whole bunch that got stats. There's a whole bunch that do resource cost dampening, um, which can be very effective. And there's one that does... Instead of resource cost damping, it's dampen resource cost, and it's a different thing. I honestly can't tell the difference between the two. I don't know why only one of them is like that. Um, but it is, you know, if, you ha if you're having really bad uh, mana problems, you can uh, go with that. Uh, the last option is obviously going to be move speed. Um, I feel like my move speed is actually pretty solid right now. Um, I'm... Like, I'm over a thousand, and then when I'm in maps, I'm more. Uh, but it's my I feel like my move speed isn't as important as those 15 stats that I'm getting from this. Um, it can go up to six, so you'd get eight instead of 16, 15. But obviously, I think stats is the best one. Um, of course, prefixes. 
Movement speed is you, you. You're gonna get move speed. It. You'd be silly. You'd be a crazy person if you have boots that don't have move speed on. Um. Now it's important to note that. Uh, tier 11, 12, 13, it's only a 2% move speed increase. Uh, so when I was Vespering these, I got these 13 and I got 11 here. That's good enough because uh, the this goes to 45 and then a 12 goes to 47 and a uh, 13 goes to 49. If you're absolutely critical, you got to get move speed okay, but it's only 4% move speed and getting the next two to 13 was more important. Um the strike damage uh, is from Hamal, and I, I wanted to point this weird bug out uh, because I think it's a weird bug. Once in a while when you do a dual authority piece, the symbol around the icon will stay the same even though they're different authorities. I don't know why it is, but it's something that bugs me. Uh, so I got strike damage from Hamal and then area damage from the boots themselves. Really, really solid. Lots of damage here. And then I did dual authority with the prefix from Spica to get damage taken dampening. Um, you'll see that I take that quite a few places because um, the... What are they called? The solo descent raids are really hard. And getting damage dampening is going to be really, really helpful. Uh, this is one of the few spots that you can get it. And more importantly, it's a spot you can get it where you're not sacrificing something good. Um... I went with just a fire resist because I happened to get it and I needed fire resist. And then totem effect range because you're using a barrier thing rolled into skill rune effect is going to be just absolutely perfect. Um, I just realized I have not high crafted these. Um, but there's not a particularly huge one you want to hit with the high craft. As for the uh, legendaries, immune to stun is really solid. Um, it's not as great as other things i would much rather have immune to freeze but there's also immune to bind um immune to freeze or immune to bind would be my choice um because the immune to stun isn't as big of an issue um stuns tend to be a one-shot deal whereas immune to freeze there's a lot of freeze effects that that uh stay in an area and you'll keep getting hit by it. So even if your, what's it called? Shout of Justice uh, goes off and gets rid of it, it can come right back uh, after, what, one second? Because you're immune for one second or something. I don't I don't remember. Uh, but I would try to get really heavily um, immune to freeze. My previous boots had immune to freeze, and I was really sad to get rid of them uh, because it's just, it was so good. Outside of that, there's literally no good prefixes, uh, and, well, I mean, there's, like, hit points or whatever, and it's useless. And then the suffixes all suck. There's not one good suffix, so really just try to get the immune to freeze or immune to bind, and, and just be happy with those. Um, immune to stun, again, I don't feel is super important, and even immune to bind isn't as super important. I would really try to get freeze here if you can um, that's it for the gear. Thank God we're finally done. Um, this took me like four hours, <laughs> but because I'm streaming and I'm a silly person. Let's move on to the next section. We are going to do the charm. hit my butt. <laughs> what? You want to fight you stupid mouse? Fight you? T tired though. I'm going to lay down. Yeah. This is, this is way more entertaining than any gameplay I could put. He's, he's pooped. Okay, let's talk about charms. Uh, for the build, uh, there is 
pretty much a no-brainer for when it comes to uh, for the bulk of your charms. Okay, uh, we're going to be using a four by one forty setup. Don't know what that is. I do have a video on my channel, uh, and the priorities here for those that again that you're starting out. Um, Castlewar is going to be your most important because it's going to give you at one forty, it's going to give you elemental damage amp. Uh, and at 80, it's going to give you elemental damage dampening, which is obviously very good. After that, um, the rest are pretty much even, but I would focus on Alyssa next. Um, Alyssa is going to give you uh, barrier and barrier amp, as well as area damage and area damage amp, uh, which is very, very good. Leo will give you projectile damage and project projectile damage amplification as well as dodge rate uh, which defensively is not as important for us right now because we don't have a lot of dodge um, but i am going to be changing that in the future to give us a bit more dodge um, because i do feel like it will be an effective layered defense and if you don't know about layering defenses i have a video on it which i am going to be doing a revised version of in season four um, Akuben is obviously good because it's going to give you uh, lightning damage and lightning damage amp, but it's not nearly as important as getting something like Alyssa uh, because Alyssa is going to give you both defensively, defense and offense, whereas Akuben's purely offense. Um, the only thing it gives you in terms of defense is lightning resistance, which isn't nearly as important as getting like barrier amp from Alyssa. Um, on the charms themselves, every charm is going to have two things for sure, which is crit uh, rate and crit damage. Getting these is important because it's one of the biggest sources of crit rate and damage in the game. Uh, so you're absolutely going to be running crit rate, crit damage on everything. The third option, if you can get it, uh, your best choices are going to be double damage chance or maximized damage. Now, maximized damage is the best one you can possibly get, but getting it is going to be very difficult. Um, double damage chance isn't nearly as good, but it is still very good. Um, obviously, if you can get it, you should be. Uh, the third option, though, um, getting what you want is going to be very difficult. So generally, you're just going to try to get crit rate, crit damage. Um, some of these I have Chaos Resist and other things because I just haven't got perfect charms yet. Uh, in a perfect world, your Legendary should be Chance to Deal Maximized Damage on it. And that is very important because uh, it does both double and triple maximized damage. Uh, triple maximized damage is very very powerful no matter how you look at it and the more of it you can get the better because it works with crit so you can do a crit hit and a triple damage hit at the same time and it will give you these really large numbers which are very very good um it's the biggest source of triple maximized damage in the game and if you can get it on all of your charms that'd be great i currently only have three uh, so it's very hard to get. Strike damage amp is also going to be very strong if you can get it. Um, as for the rest of them, aura and seal effect isn't bad. The rest are just kind of meh. Uh, your chaos star, uh, for the most part, you should be going for crit rate as much as you can get. Um, crit damage to a much lesser extent, but if you can get as much crit rate as possible, that's good. Uh, I would like to get ideally in my current version of this, I would like to get uh, crit rate across the board because I would like to get rid of the seal of crit chance so I can put seal of condensed elements and get more damage out of it. Uh, in a perfect world, if you want to get real nuts, which is what I plan to do eventually, um, is try to get all of your T, uh, T9 like red text, I don't know what to call it, um, as triple damage chance, or uh, as, sorry, chance to deal maximized damage on hit, because getting three more spots of that can really increase your chance, and it's going to be really, really strong, um, but it'll be bananas to try and get that. So what you should be really aiming for on a Chaos Star um, is just crit rate, crit damage. Um, again, ideally crit rate more than crit damage, but either is going to be solid if you can get them. 
Um, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about for charms. So let's move on over to the charm slot upgrade. Okay, charm slot upgrade. Now, since we're going with a 4x140 setup, a lot of our stuff is sort of locked in and really uh, unable to move. So your uh, Chaos Star Blessing, uh, you're going to be using, or Charm Slot Upgrade is going to be using Blessing Effect. Uh, this is non-negotiable as a 4x140. Um, early on, uh, if you don't have the stuff to get a 4x140, there are other options that are viable here, but really getting Blessing Effect um, is going to be pretty much set in stone. Uh, if you were to do, like I said in the previous thing, the really, really zany star with triple damage chance, there would be some other things that may play into being better than this. Uh, like something doing like doing maximized uh, chance for here. But overall, uh, your chaos star upgrade is going to be blessing effect. Pretty much almost guaranteed. The charm slots themselves... Uh, you've got seven, you've got the all, and then you've got one for each. And for the longest time, I had been using the critical two as my all. It's going to be a pretty safe bet to assume that it's going to be the best one um, because it's going to give you crit rate, crit damage, etc. Um, the one thing that will eventually make this not as good as you're in your all slot is if you get enough uh, chance to deal maximized damage on hit, the prefix option one will, because it will give you more triple maximized, is going to give you more overall. You are going to lose a bit of crit rate and crit damage because of this, um, but the, the prefix option one will give you more triple maximized and end up doing more damage. But you do need like three or four with a uh, chance to deal maximized damage legendaries before it's worth doing. Um, the rest of the slots, again, because we're doing a 4x140 setup, are kind of locked in. Uh, so when you do a 4x140, you're going to have three charms from each of the ones that you have in your star, and then three from a separate one. That'll be your fourth blessing. Uh, so you're, all the ones that you're using... On your fourth blessing uh, are going to be, you have to have these blessing effect ones. So you're sort of locked in there. As for the others, really, you're just looking for ones that are prefix options. Uh, so these, the tier nine ones, the legendary ones, they're all going to be the ones you choose. Um, there's not a whole lot of leeway here, but uh, I did want to point out some of the stuff like that switching from critical two to this one is only really good if you have enough triple chance otherwise it's not going to be as good and you're going to lose damage because you're not getting as much crit um i think that's it here and uh that's good because we're going to move on to the next thing. okay zodiac in zodiac one we're going to be going with cliff and we're going to be taking a the top path now alternatively early on you could take the bottom path if you really need the cast speed um but we're significantly over the cast speed cap so there's no real point uh going with the top you're going to get a little more damage upon spell as opposed to the bottom uh you will lose that on hit points but of course we are a barrier build so those hit points don't matter um when it comes to your zodiac stone uh there's a couple of different options uh but you should go with a, uh, a damage, uh, straight damage one, I per say. Um, as with quite a few of the Zodiac Zones we're going to talk about, almost every one of them you should be getting Barrier if you can get it. Um, in this case, you can also get Critical Damage and Critical Rate on this stone, which is a good option. Um, but I haven't got that yet. Uh, so there you go, Zodiac 1. Okay, Zodiac 2. Uh, we're going to be going with forest uh, there's a lot of barrier to be gained here and it is generally worth going up these extra two uh, to get the extra barrier obviously we're going to be going across the bottom so that we can get the spell damage rather than the attack damage uh, your zodiac stone this is actually a really important one 
Um, you're going to want a barrier stone if you absolutely can't get a barrier, the dodge, or the ice for now. Uh, but generally, you're going to want barrier because we're a barrier build. There are some really good modifiers to get here. Flat lightning damage, I can't stress how much importance uh, flat lightning damage makes to the build. And you can get area of effect here, which is really welcomed because there's not very many sources of area of effect. Uh, your third option should probably be barrier. Um, there's not really much else here good, and getting flat barrier is really going to help your overall. Zodiac 2. And into Zodiac 3, we're going to go into the rock branch. Um, there's really not honestly much going on in this uh, Zodiac. It's, it's sort of just dead space. Um, you get some mana, you get a little bit of damage and hit rate. Uh, your options for your Zodiac Stone are honestly not very good here. Uh, I happen to go with Mana Potion Effect because it just happened to be what I get I got at the time. Uh, but when I went back now that I'm going back to look at this stuff for the video, uh, I would probably go with Enhanced Potion Effect if you could find one. Um, your uh, engravings on this stone uh, are... Again, pretty lackluster, to be totally honest. Uh, you're going to want barrier, hit rate, and then either hit point or an elemental resist. Um, I would probably go with the elemental resist rather than the hit point. Um, but this stone, uh, I've been meaning to upgrade, so don't go by what I have here. Go by, the way. go by what I said. Also, it's important to note that you can really only use moon stones in this spot. Uh, without sacrificing and having to put extra points into a tree that isn't very good. Uh, so finding a good stone that also happens to be a moon um, is, is a bit of a problem. But do what you can. So that's Zodiac 3. Okay, Zodiac 4, we're actually going to be taking two different branches here. The first one is Seed. <clears throat> You're going to go across one of the resistances. This is a really good place to... Uh, <clears throat> use as a floating point if you are low on a particular resist. I come in here frequently as I make changes um, and just put whatever my lowest current resist is um, gets this point. Um, obviously across the bottom here to barrier. Uh, and the second one, we are going to be going into pedal. Uh, this The path here is pretty straightforward. Obviously we're going to be going up into lightning damage, strike damage, element damage. Now, your Zodiac Stone here uh, has some really, really good options. Uh, I don't have a particularly good stone for this spot, um, but you're going to want Barrier, and it's important to note that this Barrier can go up to 70%, so it's going to be really hard to find one uh, with such a huge range from 42 to 70, uh, but you really want to try and get as much as you can here. <clears throat> the engravings on this stone have some really good options. Um, there are two that obviously if you can get you would like to get uh, I cannot confirm that they are not mutually exclusive so you may only be able to get one at a time uh, but there is both physical damage taken dampening and elemental damage taken dampening on here um, and your third option would be barrier and that's zodiac 4 okay in zodiac 5 we're going to be taking flash and going across the bottom path. Um, honestly, there's not there's nothing particularly stand out here, uh, but this is the path I take because you get 40% element damage and you get 1% damage taken decrease, which again affects everything physical element chaos. Um, it's not particularly strong, but that's what I go with. Now, I want to talk about two other options that you can use if you need points. Um, the dew drop going across the top into the attack enhance stuff um can really make a big difference in terms of overall damage during attack enhance skills and stuff um which is good and then there is also lightning which there it is um which is something i want to point out because at some point we will be when i get to the lacrima section you'll see what i'm talking about uh we will be doing cold damage as well and when I get that ability, um, I'm going to be taking the points and putting them across the middle path here. Uh, so going damage against frozen enemies, freeze rate, freeze duration, 
amplified damage as freeze and possibly uh, into the other sections here at the end. Uh, your Zodiac Stone here uh, has some options that are good, but nothing really amazing. Um, honestly, there is... Uh, you want Barrier? There is a Barrier on Hit, which honestly isn't particularly strong. Um, the Stone type you want to use is probably going to be the Attack Aura and Seal effect. Uh, I haven't found a good one yet, so I haven't got bothered with it. Um, so you want Barrier, um, probably the Element Resist, and if you can get a solid one, uh, you need a purple slot specifically, uh, so the Badness slot. Um, you can get Crit on Node per uh, point in Flash. It's strong, but it's hard to get if you can get it great if you can't uh that's not that sucks uh again here we're sort of stuck using a moonstone which is part of the problem why i haven't found a good stone here um you could move some points around or depending on if i get into the lightning tree i will actually be hitting the sun nodes i need to make uh, a star stone available uh, but for the moment, honestly, Moonstones are pretty much going to be got. And that's the end of Zodiac 5. Okay, Zodiac 6. Uh, we're going to be taking two different sections here. In Breath, we're going to be taking these three points to get up the spell critical rate. Honestly, this isn't uh, particularly worth it. Um, I'm just very low on critical rate. Uh, as soon as I can get some critical rate, I will be dropping these three points and moving them to the next tree that we're going to look at, which is the uh, Convection. Uh, the first three, obviously, I feel like are really strong here is the Barrier and then Physical Damage Taken Dampening. Um, physical Damage Taken Dampening is harder to get than Element uh, with this build because you're going to be getting uh, the extra element damage dampening from the charm blessings now i said in the other thing once i get the crit rate where i want i will be moving the points over here and i will go into the the lightning resist lightning damage and then element damage taken dampening um because i feel like that's worth it more than a few points into uh your uh, critical rate now it's important uh, that I point this out because a lot I see a lot of people take this. They'll come along the lightning branch because it is a lightning build, and they see lightning and they just go for it. These four points are honestly not worth it. Uh, you get two that are just lightning resist, which we've got tons of because we're using the Akuben blessings. <clears throat> You're going to get a little bit of lightning damage and some lightning penetration and max lightning penetration. Um, but honestly, five Zodiac points to get two more max Lightning Pen, I really, really don't feel like is worth it. Um, it's something that you could work with, but I don't really feel like this Lightning Pen increase is worth it. Now, it, it would bring me to 67% because I'm already over the soft cap, uh, but I really, really don't feel like it's worth effort. Uh, your Stone... Uh, there are three different ones that are available. You can get debuff dodge chance, uh, crowd control dodge chance, or dot dodge. It doesn't matter. It barely, barely matters at all. Um, I would generally want to go personally with dot dodge chance because I feel like burn and venom are, uh, are, are and, and bleed are a little more dangerous than any of the others. Uh, the options for your stone, uh, there's not really anything particularly standout-ish here, um, but this stone is pretty much what you're going to want. Barrier, hit rate, and block expertise. You could also go with hit points, but again, uh, as a barrier build, getting hit points anywhere is kind of going to be a waste. Uh, this block expertise is going to be much more valuable. That's Zodiac 5. Okay, Zodiac 7, we're actually going to be going to three different branches here. Uh, the first one is only a single point into 40% damage of strength decks and int are 200 or more. As soon as you get this, it is worth doing. It's a 40% bonus for one point. It's probably one of the stronger single Zodiac points you can go with. 
Um, there is something to be said with going for uh, these two int points and then projectile damage and area damage. Uh, it's 60% damage overall because we have both area damage and projectile damage on both of our skills. And then 10 points into int are obviously not going to be unwelcome as we gain barrier and damage amp every 50. Um, the other branches, we're going to be going into scent, uh, going across the middle here to get to this damage upon crit. Uh, again, the dodge rate we gain is sort of useless to us because we don't really have much dodge rate right now, uh, but I do plan to make better use of this. We get some crit rate, we get some damage, and this 40% damage for two seconds on critical hit is going to be pretty much permanent uptime because we have 100% crit rate, <clears throat> or will anyway. Across the top, um, we've gone to this area of effect. Uh, it's hard to get area of effect. Um, if we found a better source of area effect so that we didn't need this um, to hit that 280 so we can get the proper overlap, uh, for a thorn explosion, I would drop these four points because honestly, it's not that powerful. Um, you're only gaining 25% area damage and hit rate and some element resist, which we don't really need. Um, these four points could definitely be spent somewhere else better, like Zodiac uh, 5. Um, and they probably will get moved, but for now, uh, there's very few places to get area of effect. Um, that don't take up a slot from something more powerful, so we've gone into here. The Zodiac Stone, obviously, uh, I feel like the best one is going to be the Enhanced Skill Rune Effect. Now, you can do Attack Enhanced Skill Rune Effect to get more out of your offense stuff, but since we use um, Pantheon, this Enhanced Skill, gaining a little bit less, or a little bit more on the offensive one, um, just so that we can get the offense as opposed to just going with this so that we get it on both um i feel like it's a pretty silly choice um now the stone still isn't very good um you could go with a star obviously um you don't or a sun sorry you don't have to worry about points because we're getting a lot of points here uh the uh aoe is available as one of the options here and you should take it um Barrier would be another one, and if you're lucky enough to get one that has a tier 4 uh, Wrath, the red, uh, you can get points per 5% uh, lightning damage per one node in Deadly Poison. And since we're using 7 points in Deadly Poison, um, this is going to give us a 35% lightning damage boost. Um, it's pretty solid. Um, the... Uh, the AoE and the Barrier, I think, take a backseat to this. Um, but again, if we can get enough AoE, we can drop this. So it might be worth trying to force that. The other branch we are in, I just mentioned, was Deadly Poison. Um, we are going to take every point in this branch. Um, this max shock effect is really strong, as well as applying shock as amplified damage. Um, and the damage against uh, shocked enemies and lightning damage, obviously, bad thing either that's the end of zodiac 7 zodiac 8 again we're going to be taking multiple branches here in hunter we're going to be going across to time of the hunt um getting the skill cooldown recovery speed is nice obviously um the 1.5 percent damage amp at the end here is probably one of the stronger zodiac uh single points um the Chance this second half doesn't really do anything for us, um, but that 1.5% damage amp is worth it. Uh, I've seen people going into other stuff into here, going up trying to get double maximized chance. I don't feel like it's particularly worth it. Um, and the movement speed and stuff are so small uh, that I don't feel like they're worth putting points into. Uh, we are also going to be going into farmer. There is a ton of barrier here and you should definitely go for it if you're going to be rocking a barrier build um so we get six percent barrier twelve percent barrier six percent barrier six percent barrier as well as eight percent barrier amp and then another two percent barrier amp um this is a very very strong thing as a barrier user and i really feel like it's worth putting the points 
the last one we're going to be going into single-handed weapon um for the critical rate that we hit along the way um i went down into this barrier point just because i have a floating uh point that i don't really have anywhere particularly good to put it um so i put it here it doesn't necessarily this isn't something that is very important uh you could definitely move this around to other places um the stone obviously we're going to be going with cast speed uh and you can go a full sunstone here there is a really strong um engraving option uh that is for every point in farmer um you gain crit damage based on your int or it, it's very oddly worded um but you can get a lot of crit damage if you can roll it um i believe it's only available on the purple uh sadness i'm i'm not 100 percent sure on that because i obviously haven't rolled it myself uh the other two are honestly not particularly amazing uh you're gonna want barrier and then either block expertise or L hit points uh, that's it for Zodiac 8. Okay, Zodiac 9. Um, there's a couple of things to do here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about them quick. Uh, so I've gone with five points up to this max lightning penetration. Now, this is only gonna be worth doing if you are already over the soft cap of 60%. Um, it's not gonna be worth taking these extra two points if you're not going to be over that cap. Um, and with that said, um, you can use a Moonstone and only take three points here to activate this and get the damage penetration. Now, you could use an Element Damage Penetration um, and get more penetration out of it. Uh, <clears throat> I happened to get this and get some decent rolls, so I went with it. Um, and if you use a Moonstone, you only need the three points. Uh, you could go higher you can go up to a uh a, a sun if you go into something like you take these two points and put them down here uh to get a better stone but honestly it's not worth it either take a moonstone <clears throat> and take these three points or take a moonstone and use these extra two uh, as like i said with the stone damage penetration is not going to roll as high as element damage penetration um, but I feel like we are so far over the damage pen cap, uh, unless I find another source of max lightning penetration that I feel is worth going for, um, it's not really too important to get the penetration. Obviously, again, element pen will roll higher and you should go for it. Um, there's really nothing special that I've found in the engravings. Get a high barrier roll, get some element resist, and then like hit point or hit rate or something else. And we're on to the specialty zodiacs. Okay, specialty one, we're gonna be taking brilliance here. And we're gonna be taking the top branch here to get to the cast speed amp and the acceleration effect, which is nice for both the, the cast speed and the movement speed increase. Um, this resource cost dampening is also very welcome because we are a very high mana cost build. And I probably went back and did a thing about the, how barrier is important at the beginning and why this resource cost is going to be important. Across the bottom, we're going to be taking the overpower effect or the overpower thing and then extra overpower effect and strike damage amplification. Um, I can't stress enough how much overpower is very, very, very strong and you should go for it. The Zodiac Stone itself here, um, there's... A bunch of different uh, implicit values that you could go for. Um, you could go with a an int-based one and get some really good strength out of it uh, and whatnot. Um, this just happened to be what I have at the moment. Uh, and the only reason I'm still using it is because I have this point here. If you get a, uh, a tier 3 blue, I'm pretty sure it's only on the blue ones, uh, you can get... Uh, for every point in brilliance you're going to gain uh overpower effect and again i just talked about how strong overpower effect is so getting this like 60 or 70 percent up to 80 percent um from overpower here is going to be really strong uh it's important to point out that you can also get 
um, movement speed and AoE here. Um, and trying to get area of effect, again, is hard. There's not a lot of places to get it. I would really like to, next season, I'm not going to bother trying to do it now because it's the end of the season and these get reset. Uh, I, I'm going to try to get AoE and what was the other one I just said? And movement speed here as well as brilliance next season um, when I come back. Again, the, um, uh, the implicit, there's a bunch of good options, but flat damage is always going to be well. Okay, specialty two. That's not two, that's three. Specialty two, uh, we're going to be going for vacuum. And we're going to be going down into this element damage amplification. Uh, I, I feel like it's a really strong thing to choose. Uh, the element damage taken amplification is not super welcomed, uh, but it's definitely worth uh, getting this 15% amp. Hitting Knowledge Effect is obviously pretty good. It is going to give you a little bit of cast speed um, and damage upon spell, which again is not unwelcomed. And then we're going up the right branch into the Sharpness Effect. Now, if I got to a point where my spell critical rate uh, was enough that I didn't need this, I would drop this in a heartbeat to go up this way to get Realization. Um, and most importantly for me is this right here. Immune to freeze while barrier is active would be really, really nice to get. Um, with that said, um, it is very unlikely that I will get enough to get rid of this. What I could end up potentially getting is enough to drop these two so that I can go up into this area of effect and area damage amplification. Um, now, if you do that, it's important to note you can't use a sun stone. You would have to go with a star or lower. Not that that's a huge deal, but it is something to be aware of. The stone itself, you're going to want damage taken dampening. There is element damage taken dampening and others, but damage taken dampening, as I always say, it's going to get physical element and more importantly, chaos dampening uh, on the stone. Uh, there is... Uh, some good stuff on here. You can get element damage, you can get critical damage, and then there is a um, knowledge effect per vacuum that you can get, uh, which is fine, but it's not really worth the effort to get. Um, because knowledge itself, while it's fine and it's worth getting, you get cast speed and damage upon a spell. Increasing knowledge effect because these values are so small, unless you're getting a huge amount of knowledge effect, you're not really gaining much. Um, it is worth trying to get on the stone, but if you get an element and a critical damage roll, uh, you should probably just go with it. Okay, last one. Especially three, we're going to be taking Waterfall. Um, the bottom branch here is very strong, and I've talked about this particular node quite a bit during this video. This node, 1% um, element damage amp for every 50 int. Now, we're going to be stacking int like crazy anyways because every point of int gives us more uh, barrier regen, or barrier and barrier regen, which is obviously going to be very, very strong, as well as the rest of the points in here are good element damage, element damage, cast speed. And this last one um, is, a, is a dual effect. Cast speed amp, which is going to make sure we're staying nice and high in cast speed. And resource cost dampening, I've talked about. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I went back, even though I haven't done it yet, I went back and put a thing about barrier at the beginning of the video. Uh, the second one, uh, going up into here, it's 15% damage amp, which is going to be hard to beat. Um, but honestly, the rest of this isn't really particularly amazing. Um, I've seen people ignore this branch and go down into recharge, uh, as barrier users, but I honestly don't feel like it's particularly strong, um, especially because defensively I feel like we're fine and getting more offense is our biggest issue, uh, so I would stay up here. But it's also important to note that if you have to do reflect maps, it's easy enough to pull these two points out and put them into here and then there so that you get element damage 100% uh, element damage taken decrease, which means you're immune to reflect damage, which is nice for mapping. The stone itself is probably the strongest stone in all of the Zodiac stones. 
Um, you're going to want element damage amplification. There is a straight damage amplification one, but again, that it won't roll as high, so you should go for this. Um, you can get lightning damage amp here. You can get flat lightning penetration here, which is really, really good. Um, and then there's a node. Um, I'm not sure what you need to get it, but it is critical damage during shout effect. And since we have full uptime on shout of provocation, um, that will give you some nice crit damage. Uh, there aren't particularly anything else worth getting. Um, so if you happen to get these two, uh, I would just take these two and not worry about the shout one like I did. And that's the Zodiac, guys. Let's move on and finish this thing up. Old men playing games, right? Bap, 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 bap. Oh, I think that's... Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh Sattler. You're killing me right now. Hi. Okay, Zodiac stat point. Um... I've talked many times in the video about how important gaining extra int is going to be. Uh, so basically I'm hitting the bare minimum for strength and then I'm doing dexterity up to a point where my hit rate is at 100% during 155 maps. Uh, I think it's about 26,000 hit rate um, to get to 100%. Uh, so yeah, I'm at 20, 25,200, and I actually go up uh, because I have other things that activate when I maps. But it is important to note that I use four different guild buffs at all times. Um, I'm using the damage one, the hit rate one, the movement speed, and the critical rate one. Um, I keep these up at all times and occasionally swap in the gold gain, item rarity, and essence drop when I'm mapping and the hit point, element resist, and chaos resist when I'm doing um, solo descent raid or void rift or something more difficult. Um, so yes, keeping your uh, strength, which is a, a minimum of 308 to use the skills, um, at 308 is important. And then every point you can take out of decks that you can put into int, to get over a 50 point threshold is gonna give you another damage amp. Um, as I've said before, I'm gonna be making some changes next season with some of my gear to get more stats so that I can make better use of this int. Um, but as it stands, bare minimum for strength, bare minimum for dex, and then as much as you can get into Okay, Lacrima. Now the Lacrima that I'm currently using is Nowhere near what I would want end game. As the uh, Season 3 introduced us to the legendary Lacrimas, my ideal Lacrima and what I have are very, very far apart. Also, I haven't upgraded this in a very, very long time. Um, this, I've had this basically since Lacrimas were introduced, um, and I haven't felt the need to change it because I didn't, uh, I didn't know what would make the best stuff and it's a lot of effort for things that could change uh so really what you're gonna try to get in here is as much flat lightning damage okay element damage amp um critical rate uh those kinds of things in this case you'll see that i had taken uh, a set of gloves so i could get this cast speed amplification i no longer need this um this was for an experiment that didn't work um, so I wouldn't choose these. Now, in my humble opinion, the perfect Lacrima uh, that I would want for this build would be a legendary one with a uh, unique necklace, a unique two-handed weapon, and the third spot is, is very floaty, but I think a ring would also be a good choice, and... Uh, here's why. So the necklace, the Capri necklace, is probably one of the strongest uniques in the game right now. Um, so this here, you're getting 
a bunch of stats. You're getting critical damage, hit rate, chaos resist, which again, takes pressure off of other places. But most importantly, you're getting fire damage equal to damage on every hit. Um, so if you're getting thir the max, if you're getting 35%, you are doing 35% more DPS, period. Whatever your damage was gets 35% more. Um, the fact that you're also doing fire damage does open up the options for uh, things like the energy build. Um, but even if you're not going to do that, this is an incredibly strong piece of gear. Um, as well as the max energy, which lets you um, stack it higher. Um, if you're going to do the fire energy build, or the energy uh, build, it's going to be really good. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, the uh, next one was a staff. Okay, a two-handed weapon. You're going to want a staff, and you're going to want this thing here. Frostwind uh, Galaichi Secret. Uh, it's got some really good stuff on it again damage equal to cold damage on every hit again this is a 25 percent increase of your total dps um and it's going to be done as cold damage which i talked about in the zodiac opens up the opportunity for putting um damage on cold stuff getting other effects like freezing can be really really strong um also it gives you immune to freeze uh, which is just spectacular. I can't stress that enough. Also, you get damage against cold enemy or uh, damage against enemies that are affected by cold, and critical damage again against enemies that are affected by cold, which again is very very strong. Um, and I said the third one would be a ring, ideally, um, but there are a ton of good options. Uh, let me bring up my list real quick here. Uh, so I have this list that I have made. There is a ton of good stuff in here. Um, there is a one-handed weapon uh, called Cause Confusion Hamal's Harvest that has extra fire damage and extra cold damage. Um, if you happen to get a unique uh, or a legendary Lacrima that has a unique one-handed weapon, this will apply the extra cold and fire that you would have got from Capri and the Glaichi's Wind Secret Staff thing. So you'll be able to do the energy build um, with one piece, um, but it will give you the extra damage as well. Um, and it gives damage amps against burning or chilled enemies, which both you would be able to do um, with the thing. So that's a really good choice as well. Again, I, it, I'm not sure if you'll be able to read these, um, but I'm gonna leave this list up here for a second, put it over here so it's not covered by the thing. There is a ton of good options. I said the ring um, because you can get the three hoops ring, which I just realized is, most of these are spelled wrong because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I typed it really fast. Uh, three hoops is what I would take personally as my third one um, because you get overpower, you get crit damage, um, and you get a ton of stats, which you can then dump into int to give yourself damage amp and barrier. But again, there are a ton of really good options here. Um, unfortunately, there's no really good helmets. Uh, so if you do get stuck with a helmet as the third option, you really don't have particularly anything good. Uh, but there's good shields, there's good chests, there's good boots, there's good shoulders, there's a good uh, necklace I just talked about. Rings, belts. Um, there's lots and lots of good stuff, and I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, but the w ones I wanted to point out were the uh, Cause Confusion, Hamal's Harvest, and the Hoops. <sighs> now, if you can't get a Legendary Lacrima, and you are forced to use a two rare, one, uh, one magic Lacrima like I am currently, um, two-handed weapon can give you some really strong stats, offhand can give you some really strong stats, um, rings, necklace, um, and whatnot. Now, if I happen to get a chest piece here, um, I would very much go into the uh, dampening, uh, take the Spica dampening chest, or if I got, uh, potentially, if I didn't have uh, a good two-hand, or sorry, not uh, offhand uh, quiver, like this one that I've made, uh, I would use a shield and get the dampening from that. 
Um, even a set of boots would be really welcomed here uh, because you can again you can get dampening and you can get move speed, which is really nice. But really, you're just using these to fill in as many gaps in your build as you can. If uh, if I'm gonna redo this next season, if I don't get my legendary lacrima before then. Um, I will be redoing one that's going to give me crit rate so I can swap out my seal of crit chance. And that's it for Lacrima. Let's move on. Okay, Relic and Avatars. Um, your first Relic should be Avatar of Seftar um, for the Mental Stimulation skill. Uh, it will give you quite a bit of damage amplification, um, element damage amp. You will take more damage from it, um, but since we're running so much dampening, this shouldn't be a problem. Now, if you are early on in the build and you're having trouble, uh, you feel like you're dying a lot, I would switch to this sharpness effect uh, or even focus as a defensive thing until you can get your dampening up to a point where it's safe to use this. I wouldn't use this right out of the gate if your uh, dampening is low because you're going to take a lot more damage. Uh, the two uh, links that I would use, uh, Mental Stimulation Effects, so you get more amp, and occasionally, um, I, 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 depending what I'm doing, I switch the second spot around. Right now I'm using uh, Damage Taken Decrease to offset some of this Damage Taken Increase, um, but you could also go with um, Skill Rune Cooldown Recovery, so you can keep more uptime. Uh, or you could do the... Well, any of these are going to be uh, pretty solid overall. Um, but frankly, those are the two I'm using right now. Again, if you're going to be trying to worry about damage output, I would switch to the cooldown recovery speed to keep more uptime. Uh, the second avatar, you're going to be using Akuben. Uh, purely for its passive effect of lightning damage and lightning penetration. Um, obviously... It shouldn't, it shouldn't need to be said why that's good. Your third, you're going to be using Vesper, okay, so that we can get this percentage-based int increase. Um, so the more int you have, the more int you are going to gain, and obviously I've talked many times about how much int is important in this build. Um, now I want to go back to Seftar for a second because I skipped over it. Um, its passive skill is pretty flexible. Um, right now, my hit rate isn't where I want, and I do have to use some things to get it where I want. So I'm using the hit rate, um, but it's important to note that you can also do the cast speed and move speed increase. Uh, you can do the spell dodge rate in a later version of the build where I've got more dodge. Or if you're having trouble with a uh, particular boss and getting chaos damage... Um, this will give you chaos resist and max chaos resist, which is really important. Um, I switch this on when I'm doing solo descent raids because I tend to take a lot of chaos damage. Uh, your fourth avatar is going to be Aquila uh, because you can only get one of the two first spots and this will give you 35 barrier. There's really, really not a lot of good options. I would go with that. Um, your core and soul gem... Uh, now, you should be using a Barrier Soul Gem. It shouldn't need to be said that that's going to be your best choice. Uh, the only reason I'm still using this Dodge one is because I happen to get Damage Amp, um, and it had hit points, and at the time that was important. Um, but this Damage Amp, it's going to be hard to drop uh, this Damage Amp in favor of getting a little extra Barrier. Uh, if I happen to get a barrier version that has the amp, I would definitely do it. And you, as a player building this, should 100% be going with a barrier one here um, and try and get some deep skills. Your core, um, to be totally honest, it, I mean, you're going to obviously go with the int. Uh, the rest of the stats don't matter too much. The Phantom Castle appearance um, is probably one you should aim for so that you get more. Phantom Castles, which is the Mist Burner, which is where you get Lacrimas. Um, and since I'm trying to farm a legendary Lacrima, this is going to be something that is important. Um, there are a few other... Uh, what are they called? Options here that you could go with. I don't remember. The one has AoE, which if early on, if you're having trouble getting the AoE... Um, 
to to make the build work. Uh, you can use that in a temporary fashion. Uh, there it is. The Cathsor has area of effect and area of effect damage. It's not bad, um, but again, it only affects like the area, and it doesn't really give you much else. Uh, I feel like the others are better choices. Um, but that's it for Relic and Avatar. Okay, coming up to the end, we are into Masteries. Now, I've been flipping these around quite a bit. Um, these are really nice as a flex spot uh, where you can move around things as you need um, to get uh, gaps in your build filled in. Currently, I am going with three points into the weapon uh, spell and da attack damage. Um, it's While it's nice, you should be putting three in here. I see a lot of people go with five. Um, it, I don't feel like this makes a big enough difference uh, as opposed to taking two of those points and putting them into something else as an extra point beyond five. Uh, the second one, I feel like currently this is uh, very, very important, is going gear critical rate. Again, if you get to a point where your crit rate is over the crit cap, uh, you need about 730 crit uh, to be over the crit cap at uh, monster level 155. Uh, if you happen to get there, you could switch it out to um, weapon attack and spell damage or save those points and just shove them down into damage amplification. Um, there's element penetration down here, but I think I feel like that's strongly a waste. And there's critical damage down here as well. But again, I feel like damage amplification is going to be the best one um, if you're at a point where you can sacrifice this crit rate. Um... In the armor one, uh, we've got points, four points into the gear barrier and stuff. Again, this is going to be really helpful, but it's not so important that you should worry about getting extra points into it. Um, enhanced skill rune duration is, as far as I'm concerned, the only one that's even really worth looking at here. But it's important to point that if you have element resist issues, uh, you could go put these points in here and it will help you uh, again, as a flex spot. Uh, the bottom one, damage taken dampening is unquestionably the best in this build. Now, at the end here, there's barrier amp, and you might think that's really, really worth it. Um, but this damage taken dampening is going to be much more important in this version of the build. Uh, again, offsetting some of those places where you're going to be taking extra damage, uh, I think is more important than getting more barrier. In accessory, <laughs> I really wish I could put less points into hit points since this is completely useless to us. Um, if our barrier goes down, we're probably dead anyway. Uh, the second one, we're putting five points into damage. Uh, you could go into stats here, and I haven't really tested if it's worth putting these five points to get 10 more stats because that's 30 overall stats, um, and that might push me to a damage amp point, which I think would be probably better than this, as well as giving me more barrier. Uh, but for the moment, I have gone with the damage. And in the last one, aura and seal effect, uh, because auras and seals are very strong. Uh, I don't honestly feel like the other options in here are great. Potion effect, obviously, you could if you're running a lot of potions, which I currently am, this is something I want to test. And max element penetration is also something I do want to put in um, because I could get 2.5 uh, over my cap, which I already have. Um, so I think that would be something you could work with. Um, but, I, but at the moment, I've gone with Orin Seal Effect. I haven't done a lot of testing with this last row. On to the Alchemy Mastery. Um, we're going to be hitting... The, the first row, you got to pick something. I went with combining price discount because I do a lot of combining. Um, mana, you're going to go all three, or all four, sorry, of the mana pot things. Mana potion cooldown recovery speed, mana potion effect, mana potion cooldown recovery speed, and then resource cost dampening for five seconds upon using a mana pot. Since our cooldown is only six seconds, we have pretty much permanent uptime on this 15% resource cost dampening. And since we are trying to activate mana pots as much as possible anyway, this is really effective. 
Uh, we've also gone with these enhanced potion things. Now, if you're not running potions, if you're early in the season and don't have the ability to keep permanent uptime on six different enhanced potions, uh, these probably won't be worth it. But at the same time, going with the hit point potion stuff um, is not particularly effective. Uh, again, if our barrier falls, we're probably dead. If we're relying on mana or on health pots, sorry, uh, to save ourselves, we're already in trouble. With that said, I am obviously taking this thing, Absolute Perfection. Uh, instantly removes Bleed, Burn, and Venom when using a hit point. Because you can force use hit points, or hit point potions, um, just by pressing, I have it on one. Um, so if I happen to get burned, bleed, or venom, uh, even with my barrier up, I can force use a mana pot, or a health pot, sorry, and it will remove these. Uh, and I feel like that is really good. Also, we've gone with uh, Chaos Card Synthesis Acceleration here, um, because I sent 8 million Chaos Cards, and this is just going to... It's, it's a little bit faster. And uh, Charm Synthesis Acceleration, because I'm always crafting charms, uh, trying to get those perfect charms. Again, a lot of this is flexible, because you can reset for next to no gold and move things around as necessary. And I want to point out that I keep a second character um, that uses the, uh, the hit point, or sorry, the, the formula success chance um, on a character that I don't play, and I make him craft all the stuff. It only goes up to 3%, but 3% more potions when you're crafting the high-end damage potions. Uh, um, it, it's something. Uh, I don't do it on this character. I don't feel like it's worth wasting those points, uh, but I do have a character specifically that crafts all my potions. Oh, <sighs> Okay. Almost done, let's move on. Okay, I always put this last little section here um, just to talk about it very quickly in, in case a player, uh, this is the only experience they've had with one of my build guides. Um, obviously, your um, rune compendium effect can have a huge impact on your character. Uh, so when we talk about like rune slots, Getting as many six links as you possibly can in here as quickly as possible is going to make a big difference because there's a ton of stats to be made here. Um, and the first 10 shouldn't be too bad to get. You should be trying to force those six links um, as quickly as you can because you don't really need a lot of the uh, earth essence once you have got your uh, the base of your build set up. You've got your two six links for your uh, your main skills, and then the rest of it is just like fives or less, and you should be able to get them fairly easily and then be dumping every point you can get into these six links. Um, rune grade is also very important here. Getting as many legendary uh, runes into your compendium as you can. Um, again, it's a lot of damage boost. I don't have this quite maxed out yet. Um, but trying to get these for, again, the first 10 um, will give you 4% damage amp and a whole bunch of just straight damage. It's very worth doing. Now, sadly, rune growth doesn't do much for us here because it only gives us hit points. Um, in my upcoming, uh, com what is it, uh, community wish list video that I'm doing, uh, I would like them to put barrier on here as well, or, uh, and the option I'm giving them that I think would work, is either 2% hit point or 2% barrier, whatever is higher. And I think that would be a, a fair way to give, give the barrier players the same benefit that the hit point players are getting, um, without letting the barrier players double dip by getting the hit points and the barrier. Um, the other... What was the other thing? Where's the other thing? Not this. Hold on. Uh, the orbs. It's important to note when it comes to orbs here um, that, yes, you're going to want all the orbs, obviously. Getting the stat orbs and stuff, getting the resist orbs is important. Um, and lightning damage orb is important, but also, and I don't know, know why enough people don't know this, but because the base damage of Thorn Explosion is physical, the physical damage orbs are also important. It will add damage. 
Even though it's being converted to lightning, initially its base stuff is physical, so it's important to try and stack that as well. Um, I do not know for sure if us getting fire and cold damage will be affected by these orbs. I don't believe so, um, but us getting the fire and cold damage in the Lacrima um, might make these viable as extra damage. I don't know, um, but I don't believe it will, but that is something to pay attention to. Uh, I think that's it. I get to go back and watch all these sections now before I do the outro. But you guys get to go straight to the outro. So I'll see you over there. Well, congrats, guys. You made it to the finish. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned some stuff from it. I hope it helps you with whatever build you end up using, if it's this one or otherwise. Um, I will be updating this build in Season 4, because it is my main that I play. I will also be updating my uh, Sentry build, and I will likely be playing something new in the Season. Um, hopefully something that is going to help me progress and learn and uh, help give you guys more information. Um, I'm actually going to put out a video um, probably today uh, trying to... See what your opinions are on what I should play next season. Um, for now, guys, I really hope you uh, enjoyed it. I put a lot of effort into these things, so I, I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm going to go get some food um, and while this uploads, but uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you out there.